A girl lived peacefully next to her father, a renowned pharmacist, but her life changed completely after being kidnapped and sold as a servant in the emperor's palace, and guys, thank you very much, we reached almost 20,000 subscribers and I'm very happy, you are awesome, and we are not going to stop, we are going with everything towards 20,000 subscribers. So put your finger on the like button below and click on subscribe, so without further ado, let's get to the video. Mau Mau's father catches her attention, and asks her to deliver some medicine to the Verdigris house, but asks the girl to be careful, as they have been kidnapping women out there lately. And Mau Mau says that he will be fine, as he will only stop by to get herbs when he is returning, well, the girl heads to the greenhouse, and then three men start watching her, and when testing the medicine, she notices that she is taking a long time to cure, and decides to change the recipe. Then Perrin appears there and notices that the girl is hurt, and Mau Mau explains that this is part of her experiments with medicine that she always does, and Perrin asks if she has been eating properly. And well, the lady from the Verdigris house goes to Mau Mau, and asks her not to start letting out explosions again with her experiments, and then, the lady offers Mau Mau a career as a love professional, in which case the girl just leaves the medicines there and runs away. And on the way she calls the lady a weirdo, because she is always trying to make her become a whore. Well, she goes to collect the herbs, but ends up being kidnapped by the men from before, and in this she disdains the situation, saying that her father I would be very worried. And meanwhile, Lady Lihua was giving birth to the prince, and after three months of what happened, Mao Mao was working in the palace, and she wonders if she was really sold or if they didn't pay for her ransom, after all, it's been three months since the kidnapping. And Mao Mao murmurs, saying that the palace is almost the same thing as brothels, and for her, the best thing would be not to get involved with the inner palace, but the girl already finds herself without options, and regrets it, as she was living a very good life as an apothecary until then. And well, she explains that the inner palace is a garden for women who are responsible for giving birth to the emperor's children, and the entry of men there is strictly prohibited, only the emperor, his family, and eunuchs, which are men who have lost important parts of their bodies. And the inner palace has a huge number of 2,000 concubines and servants, as well as a thousand eunuchs, and Mao Mao explains that unlike concubines of any level, female servants like her are disposable, and can lose their lives at any moment. Well, one of the servants goes to her and asks which room that sign is telling her to go to, and she replies that it is Wisteria, 9, to which Mao Mao says that most of the servants don't know how to read, and says that there, they are taught the essential rules of etiquette and that's it. And she says that even if they received a raise for knowing how to read and write, that money would also be stolen by the kidnappers, so it wouldn't make any difference. Well, that being said, Mao Mao explains that even mere servants like them could become low-level concubines, it would only depend on appearance and her breasts, but considering Mao Mao's skeletal appearance, she comes to her senses and notes that she has no chance at all. Furthermore, the more she stands out, the more her life is at risk, and so, Mao Mao decides to remain in the shadows, as she just needs to try a little harder and in two years she will be able to get out of there, well, the servant from before goes to her, and comments about having seen a very handsome eunuch in the central area. And the scene cuts to that eunuch, and he was in Lady Li Hua's delivery room, and Xiaoling's mother shows concern about her son's health, but she is informed that the doctor is busy attending to the prince. The next day, Mao Mao talks to her friend about the prince and Princess Lingli, in which the girl talks about such a curse, and wonders if the family is suffering from it. But Mao Mao wasn't aware of any of this, and her friend comments that the inner palace doesn't stop talking this rumor, in this case, would be the rumor that all the heirs who were born there were dying. And she explains that all three of the emperor's sons that have been born so far have become weak and ended up dying, and apparently this is happening again with the other son, and the girl says that the doctor went to visit Lady Gyokuyu and Lady Lihua, and as the emperor does not have an empress consort, Lady Lihua would probably take that place, since she was the one who gave birth to the prince. And Mao Mao says that this would be the obvious thing to do, as Lady Lihua must certainly be considered the most important woman for the emperor, but her friend says that there are rumors that talk about the emperor preferring Lady Gyokuyu more, and people they say this may be the cause of the curse. And the girl gives a guess about the situation, and says that Lady Lihua is possibly much worse, 
as the doctor is always with her and her son. So Mao Mao questions whether she is also sick, and her friend explains that she and her son has headaches and stomach aches, as well as nausea. And that's enough for the girl to think it's a curse, but Mao Mao says that believing that is very innocent, and so she analyzes the information, and believes that the family could have been poisoned, but she thinks that if the if anyone wanted to take the position of imperial heir, it wouldn't make sense to target the princess. So the theory that she was deliberately poisoned is the least likely, in which case Mao Mao starts to believe that it is a simple hereditary disease, and well, she stops and wonders why she is taking a rumor so seriously, but even though she tries to leave it to there, the girl becomes curious and decides to go and take a look at what is happening. But when she gets there, she sees the ladies fighting, and Li Hua accuses Gyokuyu of having placed a curse on her son, because he was jealous of her having given birth to a boy, but Gyokuyu says that it doesn't make sense for her to think like that, after all her Xiaoling's daughter is also sick, as is the prince. Well, a man calls Jinshu to talk, and the two continue arguing, and Gyokuyu says that he would also like his daughter to be examined by the doctor, and when looking at the doctor, Mao Mao feels that he is nothing more than an idiot charlatan, after all he he's been with his concubines for a long time and hasn't noticed anything. Then she goes back to analyzing the symptoms of the ladies and their children, and then goes to them to report what the real problem would be, and on the way she passes Jinshu, saying that she would need to write the origin of the problem on something, and he hears everything is strange, those words. Well, at nightfall, the prince dies in his mother's arms, and after a month of his death, everyone already knew, and Jinshu goes to Gyokuyu, and she explains that the day she visited the Crystal Palace to ask that when the doctor analyzed her daughter, she found that piece of cloth tied to a stick, and on the cloth it said that the white face powder is poison, so she shouldn't let her baby touch it, but upon hearing this, Jinshu finds it strange that the doctor took all those steps to not say something so simple, and Gyokuyu says that he possibly didn't know how to treat the prince. At this Jenshur wonders who would have sent the message on the cloth, and the lady says that she would like him to find out about it, and then he remembers that that day Mao Mao commented about needing to write on something, and that makes her his main suspect. Well, Mao Mao is talking to her friend, until she is called to go to the servant's matron immediately, and when she gets there she already imagines that she is in trouble, after all, servants being called by high-ranking officers cannot be a good thing, and well, Jinshu appears and leaves all the girls drooling, but Mao Mao initially thinks he would be an arrogant looking woman, and then he goes to them and introduces himself as the manager of the inner palace, in which she discovers that he is a man, and believes that her friend was probably talking about him when she said about the handsome eunuch. Well, he holds up a piece of paper for everyone, and it says that Mao Mao should stay in the room, and when she reads it, she is amazed, and says that she really knows how to read, unlike the other servants, so he tells them all to go back to their rooms, and Mao Mao understands that Jinshu wrote on paper precisely to separate her from the other servants. But still, she decides to try to get in the way, but he calls her back and asks her to follow him, and on the way he comments that in her records it was as if the girl didn't know how to read, and Mao Mao tries to control the situation again, saying that it must be a mistake, because pretending to be ignorant is the best choice she could make at that moment, and well, she wonders how he would have discovered the messages she left, after all the girl had made sure that no one would be watching her. And arriving at the place, he takes her to Lady Gyokuyu's room, and the girl thanks her for Mao Mao's help with her message, and she feels relieved to discover that she would not be punished, and the lady thanks her for saving Mao Mao's life. Ling Li. However, she says that she is not worthy of such kindness, but Gyokuyu says that she can't thank her enough for what Mao Mao did for her, so the girl continues trying to give up and says that she got the wrong person. And Mao Mao thinks that he doesn't want to die for lying to someone important, but he also doesn't want to get too involved with them, well, Jinshu shows the cloth left by Mao Mao, and says that that fabric is only used in the servant's clothes, more specifically in the clothes of the girls who work at the laundry, which, by the way, is where Mao Mao works. And this leaves her much more trapped, and Jinshu asks her to explain why she had placed that flower on the window sill. well, she explains that she had discovered what was going wrong, and says that the cause was precisely the makeup powder. And Mao Mao explains that where she grew up, courtesans used sophisticated makeup powder, and most of them were poisoned by the powder and ended up losing their lives, and the girl explains that because she is an apothecary, 
she knows a few things about poisons. In this Gyokuyu says that the face powder on the table was used by the baby's nurse, and then she ended up getting sick and had to rest at home, and then the lady reflects that being ignorant is a mortal sin, and says that she should have paid more attention to the things that go into her baby's mouth. But Jinshu says that he is also to blame for this, because if he had realized earlier, he could have saved more lives, like that of the prince himself. But Gyokuyu says that he mentioned this to Lihua, but everything she said only made the lady more suspicious of her. Well, Mao Mao wonders if they'll need her yet, and Gyokuyu asks the girl to be her lady-in-waiting, and upon hearing this, she is in disbelief, but thinks that if she continues acting in the shadows, she will continue to lack prominence, even though she is in a higher position, well, in a village one of the men falls dead on the ground, after eating food poisoned by someone. After one of the men falls to the ground poisoned, one of the soldiers tries to look for culprits, and ends up getting excited, so his colleague asks him to treat the soldiers first, well, Jinshu stays on top of the situation, and Gao Shan says that the soldiers' food soldiers was made by the villagers. And the leader of this village would have been arrested for helping the barbarians, so Jinshu asks for time to think about what they should do, and the man comments that he heard about Jinshu having hired a new lady-in-waiting to serve Gyokuyu. And he says he did this because the lady only had four women to serve her, and that is little compared to Li Hua, who has more than ten servants, and this hurts her dignity as a high-ranking concubine, but she did not would hire any servant of unknown origin. Because being suspicious of others is something natural for an emperor's concubine, and well, Gao Shan questions who the new lady-in-waiting would be, Jenshu says that she is the most convenient servant possible, in this case, it would be that servant with freckles, and he explains that the girl has very valuable knowledge in medicine. And then the servant understands that she is really very useful, but wonders what will happen if she uses her knowledge in an evil way, and Jenshu says that it's just that they don't give her the chance to do that, and says that anything is just him use your beauty to seduce her. And meanwhile, Xiaolan talks to Mao Mao, and says she's jealous of her, after all the girl is going to serve a high-level concubine, but she doesn't seem so excited about it. Well, when she left outside, Jenshu was already waiting by Mao Mao, and she says that she will go to Jade's palace soon, and asks if he would like anything. Then he touches her face, and casts a charm, to prevent Mao Mao from doing anything wrong with Lady Gyokuyu, but she excuses herself and continues on her way feeling disgusted with the situation. And well, she arrives at the palace, and is greeted by a woman, who introduces herself as Hong Nyang and leader of Gyokuyu's ladies-in-waiting, and then she asks Mao Mao to follow her, and she goes to the lady's room, in which she is received by the lady and her daughter. And after that, Mao Mao is introduced to all areas of the palace, then Hong Nyang takes the girl to meet the lady's other servants, and the first of them introduces herself as Ing Hua, while the girl next door is called Guiyuan. And the girl on the right introduces herself as Ailin, and finally, Mao Mao also introduces herself to them, and says she is happy to work with them, but the girls notice a band on her arm, and are already suspicious of it. And well, Mao Mao walks over to them to start work too, but Ing Hua says that she could go rest in her room, as she has a special task to do later, so Hong Yang takes her to her room. And the servants comment on the band Mao Mao had on her arm, so Gui Yuan suggests that she is possibly hiding scars made by her abusive parents, and then be sold to the inner palace and start working as a courtesan. Well, she's left in her room, and she reflects on never having wanted to achieve anything very big, after all, a newcomer like her certainly wouldn't be well accepted there, but Mao Mao notices that those girls' eyes were full of empathy for her. Well, after that, Jin Shi takes her to test a dish, so the girl can find out if it has poison or not, and he explains that the food made for the concubines goes through many people before getting there, and that's why it's much easier to someone poisons the dish in the process. And he says that when Gyokuyu became pregnant, her food was poisoned at least twice a day, and this caused the poison tester's nerves to stop working, to the point that she could no longer move. Then Mao Mao understands why the other girls are being very nice to her, well, the girl receives the first bowl, and when she takes it, Mao Mao notices that there are no colors or suspicious smells in the food. And when she takes the first spoonful, she doesn't feel any numbness, and then she says that the dish is not poisoned. In this she remembers that a long time ago, 
she did several crazy experiments on her arm, and this ended up making the girl more poison tolerant. And so she feels lucky to have gotten that job. After all she was going to eat the dishes meant for high-level concubines, well, after testing the dishes, Mau Mau suggests that they start using silver dishes, as they react more to poisons. And in this Hongyang says that Genshur used ceramic plates on purpose, just with the intention of testing her knowledge, and the conclusion of the test was that Mau Mau's knowledge applies to both poisons and medicine. And the girl explains that she understands this subject because she worked as an apothecary, and Hongyang says that if the girl had made it clear that she was literate, she would have a higher salary, but the girl explains that part of her salary goes to her kidnappers, and this irritates her a lot, so the less she earns, the better. And then the servant drops an expensive vase on purpose, and laments, asking how Mao Mao would send money to her family now, when she destroyed an expensive item from the palace, an item that she would not be able to pay for even with her salary. Lady in waiting. At this point Mao Mao understands Hong Yang's sarcasm, and apologizes for having broken that jar, and asks her to take the money that would go to her family, to pay for that loss, and then Hong Yang says that she will arrange the paperwork to do so. But first she pays the girl, for her dangerous work of testing the food, and when she gets that kind of check Mao Mao is surprised, because she received the same amount of money as her normal salary. And since that check was delivered directly to her, the kidnappers won't be able to take any real of that money, and this makes her more motivated with her work, and well, the girl goes back to the palace, to help the other girls with the household chores. But all the servants tell Mao Mao to go and rest. And this makes her very bored, as she is only called to test the food twice a day, but the girl is called by Gyokuyu, and the lady says that Genshur needs her, so the heartthrob is already trying to turn on his charm. From Mao Mao, but he soon realizes that his seduction doesn't work very well on her. And well, the girl asks how she could serve him, and he puts food on the table sent by a military officer, and Genshur wants her to see if it contains poison or not, and upon smelling it, Mao Mao notices that there is an aphrodisiac in it. Bread, but says that it is not harmful to their health. But Genshur explains that it might not bite's a good idea to eat it, because the person who sent him the bread is not trustworthy at all, and this would make it impossible for him to eat in peace, so the girl deduces that the person who sent that food to him will visit him more afternoon. And this impresses Genshur, because the girl is able to perceive a lot of things just by smelling the food, and then Mao Mao finds his action strange, as he already knew that the food had an aphrodisiac, but still, Genshur tried to make her okay. Eat the bread. And well, he says he has one more question for her, but first he explains that a squad of soldiers was poisoned, after being assigned to a mission to attack the barbarians, the men reported feeling nausea, difficulty breathing and some other symptoms. And Genshur explains that the meal was eaten in a nearby village, and that same squad of soldiers had arrested the village leader after he helped the barbarians, but an officer calmed the situation and suspended the leader's punishment. At this Mao Mao understands that the natural thing would be to assume that it was the members of the village who had poisoned the soldiers, but she finds something strange about this story, and asks where the soldiers had eaten their meal, and Genshur responds that they were in a camp, so they should be outdoors. And then she questions whether the village members would have also given the plates and toothpicks to the soldiers, and Genshur says that they probably must have used their own cutlery, and he questions whether Mao Mao noticed anything strange. And she takes the flower from the room and says that it is called a rhododendron, and then the girl ingests it, and says that when eating it, symptoms such as nausea and difficulty breathing occur, and in this way she makes them aware that in the palace itself there are poisonous plants inside. And the rhododendron has poison in its leaves and flowers, but the poison can vary from place to place depending on the flower, and she explains that some wood can emanate poison just by being burned, in this genture understands that the soldiers possibly poison themselves, as they used wood from nearby trees as firewood, to heat the food. And Mao Mao says that they were lucky to have a wise officer around, because if it weren't for him, the entire village could have been lost, and well, after solving the whole mystery, the girl decides to leave but Genshur asks her to wait, and asks if Mao Mao can make an aphrodisiac. And upon hearing this, the girl gets excited, and says that if she has the appropriate ingredients and tools, she is capable of doing something like that, so Genshur heads to his office, and on the way one of the servants calls him to have a drink. Tea with her in her room, but Sigma refuses, 
after all he was full of work to do. And upon arriving in the room, he talks about Genshib having been placed in the palace as a test of the girl's loyalty to the emperor, and Genshir says that even if the emperor doesn't visit the lady, she couldn't take other men to the room, after all it's not enough for a concubine to be beautiful and well-educated, she also needs to be loyal to the emperor. And his servant says that the emperor placing Genshir in the inner palace to test them was a lot of appeal, especially because all the girls drool over him. But he notices that Mao Mao is the only one who doesn't feel desire for him, besides, she looks at him with a contempt he's never seen before, and for some reason he's happy about that. And well, the servant leaves, and Genshir leaves. Remembers about Mao Mao having said that he would receive a visit from the person who sent him the bread, and this already makes him lock the doors, and the next day, Mao Mao leaves the palace, and finds the charlatan doctor and Gao Shan talking, and when he sees with her, he introduces himself again as Master Genshi's assistant, and he takes her to a room with several ingredients that she will use to make the aphrodisiac, and upon entering the room the girl is immediately enchanted by everything, and Gao Shan says that she can use any ingredient in that room without restrictions. And then she starts to make the product, but says that she will need something else, and Gao Shan immediately understands what that would be, and goes there to get the cocoa, and Mao Mao praises his sagacity, saying that he is much smarter than his master's shave. Well, when he brings the cocoa, the girl notices that it won't be enough, and Genshir says that they could get more, but Mao Mao explains that that item comes from the southern part of the west, but he says that there must be more cocoa in the warehouse. Goods. And then they get all the necessary ingredients, and upon seeing the girl working, the other servants are curious to know what she is doing, but they are scared away by Hongyang, who tells them to get back to work. And meanwhile, Mao Mao finally starts preparing the aphrodisiac, and she remembers that she already tried the cocoa flavor once, and as expected, she got all high, and Mao Mao believes that this happened because of some malicious customer from the brothel, who was possibly trying to gain the attention of a popular courtesan. However, unfortunately for the guy, he was banned from frequenting the place, and she leaves the aphrodisiac to cool, and uses the leftover cocoa to make a snack for herself, and after that she goes to collect medicinal herbs, and upon returning to the palace, the servants had eaten her lunch, and they were all high. And Genshir says that at least they know that the product works, but Hongyang gets angry and asks Mao Mao for an explanation, and the girl says that it's okay, because the three didn't eat so much, and well, she takes the aphrodisiac to Gyokuyu, and Genshir questions what those other sweets were, and Mao Mao says it's his nighttime snack. Everyone is surprised at this, but the girl explains that he is already used to alcohol and other stimulants, so his body no longer feels the effect, and so he takes the aphrodisiac and threatens to eat it, as they would also have no effect on his body, but soon after he gives it back Coco at the table, and says he was just playing with them. And Mao Mao thinks that that joke is very insolent to do in front of the emperor's concubine, but she remembers that the guy is a flirt, so if the effect of the aphrodisiac hit him, the guy could make fun of anyone who wouldn't come to nothing, after all he would be able to seduce everyone. And well, she gives the aphrodisiac to Genshir, and says that he should eat in moderation, as eating too much could make his nose bleed, so Gyokuyu suggests that Mao Mao make some for the emperor, so that his games don't get so quiet. And the girl explains that that aphrodisiac must be up to three times more powerful than the tonic, and in addition, she advises that they only use the product when they are with the person who will have the relationship, and well, everyone leaves the room, and Gyokuyu comments to his servant that Mao Mao will be very useful, due to his experience in making drugs. Then Genshir tries to follow the girl again, and thanks her for her service, and after that, one of the servants walks through the corridors of the palace, when she suddenly comes face to face with a strange being. Well, Genshir meets with the servants, and offers a reward for them to do something. Fuyo understands the situation and leaves the room in a hurry, and meanwhile, the girl who found the strange being is still there, being watched by the creature. And the next day the servants return to work normally, and comment on having been in the capital for a long time, and express how much they miss their homes, and Aelin says that she received a letter from her father, and says that he seemed to be well happy, as trade between the capitals of the center and east are going well. And Guiyuan explains that this happened because the emperor loved Gyokuyu very much, 
and well, Aelin offers to help Hua with cleaning the kitchen, but the girl says that they should share the work, otherwise they would never finish the chores, until because they don't have servants to help them. Then Aelin remembers when a foreign princess became pregnant, and regrets the fact that she was poisoned while she was pregnant, and well, Gui Yuan says that if they need a lady in waiting, they already have a new one. And speaking of her, Inghua goes to Mao Mao and asks what she is doing, and the girl says that she is preparing medicine for the flu, and this leaves Inghua impressed, as she didn't know that Mao Mao was capable of doing things like that. And she comments that the new lady in waiting is really very talented, well, she goes to Mao Mao, and asks if she doesn't need help with something, so she offers to help her with cleaning the place and asks if the girl was already aware of the new rumor that is going around the palace, and she says no. And Ing Hua says that there is a ghost in the inner palace, Xiaolan comments that it is a ghost woman in white, and says that everyone has been talking about this mysterious being for a few weeks, the girl also says that reports say that the ghost dances in the air, under the light of the moon, moreover, the ghost appears every night on the walls of the east gate of the castle. And upon hearing this, Mao Mao says that the castle walls surround the entire inner palace, so the only way to enter would be through one of the four gates, being the north, south, east and west gates, but these gates always have guards, and its walls are surrounded by a moat, so it would be impossible for anyone to enter and leave without being seen. And Mao Mao says that the concubines who tried to escape from the inner palace are sunk in the depths of the moats, but she still says that this is just a silly ghost story, but Xiaolan is still afraid of coming face to face with the ghost. And Mao Mao reassures her, saying that it's just a rumor, well, the girl goes to the quack doctor, and asks him to take a look at some medicine, and he smiles kindly, asking her to wait a minute, and when she sees the guy being so kind, she starts to find him strange, after all the guy was so wary of her until a few days ago. However, upon discovering that she knows how to make medicine, the doctor started to treat her better, and also let the girl use his room to make more medicines, in addition, he always gives her the necessary ingredients to make the medicines. Well, the doctor returns with a snack for the girl, then Jenshur appears and asks the doctor to make it for him too, and then he goes to Mao Mao and praises her for her good work again, but the girl says she didn't do anything special, and in her mind she despises him, sending the guy off to find something else to do, and says that as a eunuch, Jenshur should be in her sector. But instead, he stays around the inner palace, as if he were monitoring the functioning of the place, and upon thinking about this, Mao Mao begins to think that he is of a higher level than matron of the servants, and believes that he could be the guardian of the emperor, but then says that he must be very young to take on this role. And then she starts to think about something else, in this case, she imagines that Jenshur must be the emperor's darling, and he notices that she has a mischievous look in her eyes, and asks if she is thinking about something unkind, and the girl says that it is just his impression. Well, he gives something to the doctor, and Mao Mao questions what Jenshur wants with her, and he talks to her about the ghost rumor, and asks if it could be someone with sleepwalking, and then he asks if she would know how to cure that person. And she explains that there is no medicine that cures sleepwalking. He asks if there is a way to cure this without the help of medicine, and Mao Mao says that his specialty is just the pharmaceutical part, and then Jenshur regrets it, and tries to seduce her again, but she doesn't like his clingy attitude at all. Him, and says he will try to fix this sleepwalking issue. And as night falls, Gao Shan takes her to the mysterious being, and on the way she feels that that man doesn't seem to be a eunuch, and well, he calls her Miss Mao Mao, and she says that he doesn't need to treat her with everything. This respect, after all he has a higher hierarchical level than her. Then he asks if he can call her Xiao Mao, but she finds that nickname very childish, well, he changes the subject, and asks the girl to stop looking at her master as if he were a disgusting insect, and he tells her the time Jenshur reported this to him, and said that Mao Mao looked at him as if he were a poisonous caterpillar. And then she says that she will be more careful from now on, and well, they finally get to the woman dancing under the moonlight, and Gao Shan says that that girl is the concubine Fuyo, and explains that she will be handed over to a military officer as a reward next month. And after seeing her, they go to the doctor, and he talks about something that happened two years ago, and says that Fuyo is a shy princess and a skilled dancer, but that she failed in her first dance performance, and after that, 
she locked herself away and isolated herself from everyone and for the doctor her being given as a reward is something very sad in this Mau Mau theorizes that her sleepwalking began due to her shock at being treated as a reward, after all, many illnesses are the result of an unbalanced mind, but even though she has this information, Mau Mau feels that she needs to know more about Fuyo. So she decides to go and check on the girl again and asks where her room is, and the doctor says it's in a building on the north side, so she starts to leave, and the doctor laments Fuyo's situation, and hopes so that she gets better. Furthermore, he explains that the girl is the princess of a small dependent state, and says that it must be difficult for her to have to return, well, the two hide and watch the girl from her bedroom window, and Mao Mao comments that Fuyo has a different expression than when she was dancing on the wall. And Gao Shan says that he was also surprised the first time he saw her like that, after all, in everyday life the girl appears to be a simpler person, and Mao Mao says that she really looks like a crazy rose, a flower that opens at dawn. Its petals are wide and white, but when it starts to get dark, it turns a deeper shade of pink. In other words, the flower changes its appearance throughout the day, and well, after observing it Mao Mao goes to her friend and asks if she knows more about the woman's ghost, and Xiaolan says that the ghost appeared on the side north the first time it was seen. And this leaves Mao Mao thinking, as Fuyo would have moved from the north side to the west side, all on the basis of sleepwalking, in this she remembers what the doctor had told her, and understands the whole situation with the concubine Fuyo, but she remembers that her father taught her not to say anything based on mere speculation. However, she ignores this warning and goes to Gyokuyu to tell her what she deduced, and she explains that sleepwalking is a disease that is not much known about, and it is often said that the cause of it is stress, and Mao Mao tells about a courtesan from the her family's brothel, and says she also had sleepwalking. And the harmonica describes the courtesan as a happy and skilled woman in the art of poetry, and with that she even received an offer to buy it. But this offer ended up being cancelled, as she began to wander around the brothel at night, as if was possessed by a demon. And the next day the woman herself didn't remember what she had done the night before, and Mao Mao says that after the offer was cancelled, the girl's sleepwalking stopped, from which Gyokuya deduces that this courtesan didn't want to be sold, and Mao Mao states that it probably that was it, and he explains that the offer would have come from a rich merchant, who by the way already had a family and even grandchildren. Other than that, there was only one more year left for the girl to finish her contract as a courtier, and upon hearing this, Gyokuya realizes that Fuyo is going through the same situation as the girl reported by Mao Mao, and Genshur questions whether that was really the end of the story, and Mao Mao responds yes, but is already losing patience, so Gao Shan whispers to her to calm down. And well, after that day, concubine Fuyo was forbidden to leave her room, and eunuchs were placed to watch her door until the day of her delivery, and the next day Gyokuyu comments to Hongyang that Mao Mao has been acting strange lately. Then she understands that there must be something behind this story that Mao Mao told her, well, the day set for Fuyo to leave the palace finally arrives, and Gyokuyu comments to Mao Mao that she can tell her the truth if she wants, so the girl he asks the lady to keep it a secret, after all she will tell him something based on speculation. And then the lady promises secrecy, in which Mao Mao says that in addition to the sleepwalking courtesan that she had mentioned, there was another courtesan who had her purchase cancelled for some reason, then she ended up receiving another offer, but her price was cut in half because she got sick. And this Mao Mao explains that it was all a fraud because the two men who were going to buy the two courtesans knew each other, and the woman who fell ill faked her illness, so that they could cancel the first offer. And after that, the real buyer proposed buying it for half the first price, as he didn't have enough money to keep the two together, in addition, one of them still had some time left on her contract. And then Gyokuyu asks if Fuyo would be in the same situation as this courtesan, and Mao Mao says that Fuyo and the soldier who is going to buy her are childhood friends from the same homeland, and the girl says that besides the man she showed her worth in a fight against the barbarians, well, Fuyo emerges leaving the palace. And Mao Mao continues explaining the situation, and says that the man who fought against the barbarians asked Fuyo as his reward, and the boy deduces that he probably already wanted this before he even left his homeland, after all, a soldier like him would never I could ask a princess to marry me. And Mao Mao says that the princess certainly shared the same feeling as her childhood friend, 
and explains that perhaps this is the reason why she failed to perform her dance, as this way she would avoid gaining the emperor's attention, and as a result, she he never touched her, and that kept his body pure. But for Mao Mao, perhaps the emperor will start to see her with different eyes now, after all she will be handed over to another man. In this Gyokuyu understands what made Fuyo pretend to sleepwalk, and in addition Mao Mao says that the fight against the barbarians was in the region eastern, and the night dance she did was at the eastern gate. With this, she deduces that Fuyo was wishing that the soldier would return safely from the battle. But she says that that is just speculation, and well, she leaves walking with her lover, and Gyokuyu wonders if she would be a horrible woman out of envy. There. And as she leaves, Mao Mao remembers that Fuyo was beautiful that day when she was dancing, and in that she answers Gyokuyu's question, and says that she is not bad for feeling jealous of Fuyo, and well, after that, the two come back to the palace, and Mao Mao contemplates the end of the afternoon. And upon seeing that love is capable of making a woman very beautiful, the girl wonders what kind of medicine she would be able to make with this ingredient called love, and meanwhile, a man goes to Gyokuyu's room, and says he has a request to make to the apothecary. The servants of Lihua give Ash scolds Mao Mao, saying that the food she made for the madam is very bad, which makes the girl feel fed up, and feels that that crystal palace is not for her. And well, Mao Mao is taken to test Gyokuyu's food, and after doing her job she turns her back to leave, but the emperor calls her back, and says that he has a request to make, but before that he explains that the concubine Lihua has not been well lately, and he asks Mao Mao to keep an eye on her for a while. However, the girl understands that he wants her to cure her, and as the emperor's word is the most important, she agrees to collaborate immediately, but she finds it strange that he is saying this around another concubine, and for Mao Mao he follows it to the letter. What an emperor would do. And well, the girl is also surprised by the way people treat her there, after all she is only there on imperial orders, and Mao Mao feels that they must hate her for being a maid of the Lady Gyokuyu, as they are all the lady's servants. Li Hua. And speaking of her, Li Hua's servants complain to the girl again, and say that she has already finished what she had to do there, so she could leave, so she goes to the cafeteria and talks to Xiaolan. And she explains that she is in the Crystal Palace taking a look at Lady Li Hua's situation, Xiaolan remembers that she was not in very good health, and Mao Mao suggests that she was poisoned by her whitening powder. And her friend comments that that powder was banned there, in addition, Xiaolan says that this powder was also taken from the inner palace by the eunuchs, and then she focuses her attention on Mao Mao, and says that it is incredible that she received a request directly from the emperor. But she doesn't think that's cool at all, after all, if the emperor called her to take care of Li Hua, it's a sign that he doesn't trust their doctor at all. And well, Xiaolan says goodbye and wishes Mao Mao good luck in the kitchen, and when voting for work, the girl explains that she will start taking care of Li Hua by changing her diet to something healthier but before that Mao Mao needs to expel the poison from the her body. And to do this, she decides to prepare a kanji with lots of fiber, and accompany it with a diuretic tea, and after preparing the food she goes to deliver it to the lady, but she is stopped by her servants, who despise her, saying that that it's not a place for inferior girls to come in. Then she goes back to the kitchen, prepares a new dish and goes to Lady Li Hua again, and once again one of the servants criticizes the food, but she explains that Li Hua needs to eat something easy to digest, but another servant disputes this, and says that sick people need more nutritious food. And so Mao Mao watches that servant going to take Li Hua's food, but the girl notices that all that food is too heavy for the weakened stomach of a sick person, so Mao Mao is surprised by the fact that no one does anything about it. And then the servant gives the food to Li Hua, but the lady starts coughing, and the servants go to Mao Mao and scold her, saying that it is also her fault, so she is expelled from there once again. And that way, she feels like she'll never will be able to get close to Li Hua to help her, and meanwhile, Jinshu watches her from afar, and Mao Mao decides to go back to Li Hua's room, and asks the servants to let her analyze the lady, but they say they don't need the help. Her help. Mao Mao feels that Li Hua will end up weakening to death if she can't take care of her, after all the lady hasn't been eating for a long time, because her servants are only serving her heavy food. And furthermore, Mao Mao suggests that she has lost the will to live after losing her son, and well, she leaves the place and appears worried about not being able to fulfill the mission that the emperor assigned her, so Jenshur goes to her, 
and says that she appears to be in trouble. And then the servants immediately go out to see what that was all about and find it strange that Mao Mao is talking to Jenshu, so he tries to seduce her again and asks them to come in, and when they see this, the servants turn red with embarrassment, and he orders the girls to stop going against the emperor's wishes, as this does not suit ladies as beautiful as them. And then everyone makes the day with this comment, and decides to stop disturbing Mao Mao, and with that she finally manages to gain access to Li Hua, and when trying to serve her food to the lady, she manages to eat. However, Mao Mao notices that she is very weak, and when touching her face, she notices that the color of Li Hua's powder is the same as what she saw previously, so she goes to one of the servants and asks if she is the one who takes care of the makeup of the lady, and she replies yes, as it is essential that Li Hua always looks beautiful. And the servant says that because she is her concubine, the duty of keeping her elegant is also her responsibility. But upon hearing this, Mao Mao slaps the servant in the face, and says that that is just punishment for her being an idiot. And then Mao Mao pours makeup powder on her face, and explains that the poison will infect her body after a while, so that she too will be as beautiful as the concubine she takes care of. And Mao Mao explains that that makeup powder was not banned for nothing, after all it causes countless problems to the body of those who use it. So she turns the servant's face towards Lady Li Hua, to show her what the body of someone who uses this looks like. Makeup. But the servant tries to refute this, saying that she was just worrying about keeping the lady elegant, and then Mao Mao tells the servant that her head doesn't think about anything, precisely because she is arrogant and thinks she knows everything. And she says that Li Hua certainly wouldn't be happy about being poisoned with the same thing that killed her son, and well, Mao Mao gets up and asks the servants to clean the place, to prevent the dust from proliferating. And as time passed, Mao Mao comments that Li Hua's health was worse than she imagined, and that's why she ended up needing to change her diet from kanji with cereal to rice water. Furthermore, she opened the window to get some air into the room, and Mao Mao notices that those servants of the lady were in fact very incompetent, because in addition to not knowing how to do anything right, they were more concerned with banal things like incense than with things really important. And well, the servants bring the hot water and the cloth, as Mao Mao had requested, and in the meantime, she serves water and tea frequently to the lady, so that she can expel the poison through constant urine. And as soon as Li Hua started to improve, Mao Mao started adding more grains of rice to her water, and soon she was able to give soup and crushed fruits to the lady, and as for the irresponsible servant, Mao Mao heard that she was confined, because apparently she hid the dust from Lady Li Hua. As for the eunuch who was supposed to confiscate all the dust from the palace, he suffered punishment for his incompetence, and well, the next day she returns to her work, and Jen Shi appears there with her assistant, and presents her with her favorite food. At this she is very happy, and feels that they would make good husbands, if not eunuchs. And Jen Shi asks if she needs help with anything, and he does so by getting too close to her, with the intention of seducing her, but that doesn't work, so he goes to the sauna's builders, and asks them to speed up the construction, because Lady Li Hua needs this as soon as possible, and he explains that she needs to sweat more to expel the poison. Well, Mao Mao goes to the lady, and she manages to say something after a long time, but she was asking them to let her die soon, and Mao Mao says that if she wants that, just stop eating, but she doesn't do that just yet, have an attachment to life. And then she starts to have memories of her son, and understands that Mao Mao is right about her still wanting to live, and well, the days go by, and everyone continues to care for Lady Li Hua, and on another one of those days, Mao Mao meets the servant responsible for the makeup powder, and she tells him that she has already been released from her confinement, and received permission to serve Li Hua again. And the servant states that she will never make a serious mistake like that again, so she asks to replace Mao Mao, and the lady's first request is that the servant brings her some water, and upon realizing that she will still be able to serve her, the servant begins to cry with emotion. And well, two months passed, and Lady Li Hua was finally able to walk alone, and Mao Mao noticed that she had high self-esteem but without being arrogant, and although Mao Mao thought she was selfish after what happened with the prince, she realized that Li Hua in fact, she has the appropriate personality to be a concubine. And after observing her for a while, she decides to go and rest a little, and Lady Li Hua goes to her and caresses her, as a way of showing gratitude, but as Mao Mao's service was no longer necessary, 
she says she will leave the morning of the next day. However, she claims that she has already disciplined her servants, so that they can serve Lady Lihua correctly, and well, the lady asks Mao Mao if she will still be able to have another child but she says that Lihua will need to try to find out. However, she explains that the emperor's love for her has already ended, and Mao Mao reveals that she was sent to take care of her at the emperor's command, so she believes that he will possibly visit Lihua soon. And well, the lady thinks about her son again, and blames herself for having ignored the advice that could have saved her son, in addition, she worries about falling behind in relation to Gyokuyu, so Mao Mao explains that she shouldn't care about this, because all women have their individual value. But Li Hua says that she doesn't have light eyes or hair like Gyokuyu, and upon hearing this, Mao Mao discreetly looks at her breasts, and comments that Lady Li Hua has other attributes that are much more interesting than those that Gyokuyu has. And well, Mao Mao says something in her ear that makes her think, and then leaves the room, and then she explains that she told Li Hua. In this case she was talking about a secret technique that two older sisters from the brothel taught her. And although she learned the technique, Mao Mao says she doesn't have big enough breasts to put it into practice, unlike Li Hua. And the next day, she returns to her lady, and Zhenshir watches her from afar, and finds it incredible that she completed the emperor's mission alone. And after that, there was a period in which the emperor's visits to the Jade Palace decreased considerably thanks to Mao Mao's technique who, by the way, was unable to keep a straight face at work because of this. Well, when night falls, a man looks at his hands stained with blood, and laments, saying that he was cursed by something. That night, the eunuch's train, and Basin ends up being surrendered by Jinshir. But Jinshir tries to motivate him, saying that he has evolved a lot. But the boy says that he is still not good, as his brute strength cannot compare to his master's techniques. In this Jinshir explains that Basin's brute strength is incredible and worthy of the Ma clan. And after that, Jinshir asks Gao Shun how things are going with the apothecary, and he responds that she has already gained back the weight she lost taking care of Lihua. And speaking of her, Jinshu remembers when the girl beat one of the servants when she discovered that she poisoned the lady, and he is impressed by this side of Mao Mao, and Gao Shun notices Jinshu very thoughtful, and says that he appears to be worried about something. However, he remains silent, and Gao Shun decides to leave this story aside, and in the meantime, Mao Mao takes some snacks to eat with her friend, and Xiaolan comments that her superiors are really very good as they share their snacks and tea with the girl. However, Mao Mao doesn't interpret this in a good way, after all the girls were making her eat too much, to regain the weight she lost, and well, Xiaolan changes the subject, and tells about a palace servant who managed to win over a famous military officer for hating women, and upon hearing this, Mao Mao continues with a frown demonstrating that he doesn't care about that. But Xiaolan continues talking about this story, and says that there are rumors that this servant used an aphrodisiac to stimulate the guy, and Mao Mao remembers that he had made one of these stimulants and given it to Jinshu. And then her friend notices that she is very thoughtful about this aphrodisiac story, but she hides it, and says that possibly this servant used another aphrodisiac, other than the one she had produced. Well, the next day Mao Mao goes to talk to the quack doctor, and she shows him some mushrooms, and the doctor shows that he is very interested in them, but the doctor explains that they will also need charcoal, soybean paste and salt. And then Mao Mao comments that her relationship with the quack doctor has improved a lot since she arrived at the palace, well, they roast the mushroom, and when he eats the delicacy, the doctor is ecstatic, but besides him, Mao Mao is also very happy with that, after all, she now has an accomplice. And while they were eating happily, the man from the previous night appears there, and asks if they could make some medicine to cure curses, and Mexico asks what he is talking about. And then the guy shows the palm of his hands, and Mao Mao notices that it is a very advanced rash, and she suggests that they start by applying an ointment, so the doctor asks her to make one. And meanwhile, the man says that he was cursed two nights ago, while he was working throwing away the rubbish of the inner palace, and on one of those common nights at work, he ended up finding a woman's dress on the floor, but this piece had sleeves on, burned, and also had wooden plates, so that someone could write on the dress. And even though he was curious about that, he he decided to throw the dress into the fire, but when he did so, the fire grew absurdly large, and ended up burning his hands seriously, 
so he claims that it could only be a curse, as that stain remained on his hand until now. And well, Mao Mao takes the fire and pours a substance into it which makes it change color, and she asks the man if the fire also alternated between those colors, and upon seeing this, he asks what that thing was, and Mao Mao explains that fireworks work that way. However, the man questions what that could be in her hands, and she says that there was probably something on the wooden plates of the dress, and that would have caused irritation on his skin. And then he gives him a medicine, and asks him to test it and see if it will have an effect, in which the man thanks him for the help, and the doctor states that Mao Mao's medicines are always assertive, and with that he is sure that the man will be fine soon. Then Jin Shur shows up there, and praises the great work of the apothecary, and upon seeing him arriving, the doctor offers to prepare him some tea, and Mao Mao asks if Master Jin Shur would like anything, and upon hearing this, he you feel like you need a serious reason to go talk to her. However, she cynically says that he can feel free to talk about whatever he wants, and so he asks Mao Mao to accompany him for a moment, and when the doctor returns with the tea he has already left. And well, Jin Shur takes the apothecary to a table, and under it there are several dishes with powders of different colors, and he asks Mao Mao how many colors are on the table, but she says that she is not able to answer that specifically, so Jin Shur asks how she could transpose those colors onto something. And Mao Mao explains that you can dissolve them with salt and water, but some of these powders can only be dissolved with other things, such as oil, but that is outside his area of knowledge. And well, she understands that the matter has already been resolved, and so she asks for permission to leave, but Jin Shur asks her to wait, and upon analyzing the dishes better, he asks her to cook them in a pot of tea. Then she realizes that he discovered her ability in these things, and so she is allowed to leave the room, and Jin Shur asks Basin to do a sweep to find all the people who have recently suffered burns on their arms. And meanwhile, Mao Mao reflects on the wood of the dress, and suggests that they are some kind of code, as people would only use that for the purpose of sending a secret message to someone, and she is left wondering what that could be. But she remembers that she's just a simple poison tester, so she shouldn't worry about something like, well, she arrives at her lady's territory, and one of the servants asks her to try on an outfit. And even though it's strange that it came out of nowhere, she tests her friend's clothes, and the servant explains that this is Mao Mao's dress for the garden party, but she appears to be out of touch with this matter. And then the servant says that the emperor and his most important servants gather in the courtyard twice a year to celebrate, and Hong Nyan comments that because the emperor hasn't married yet, he doesn't have an empress consort, and she explains because of this, it is very common for them to take concubines of the highest level to the party. For the four high-level concubines are the most suitable to become the empress consort, and Hong Nyang cites the four, starting with the precious Gyokuyu, Li Hua, she is considered the wise concubine, Li Xu would be the virtuous one, and finally we have the pure concubine, called Aduo. And the servant explains that Gyokuyu and Li Hua were not present at the previous party because they had just had children, but now they decided to call all four concubines. And Mao Mao asks what their role will be at this party, and Hong Nyang says that they don't have a very relevant role there, and Gyokuyu explains that they are all just invited, so the only thing they should do is follow the emperor's rules while are at the party. And Hong Nyang says that it's normal for some officials to show up to greet them, and so she asks Mao Mao not to forget to smile when talking to them, but she doesn't seem to like that, and asks if it's mandatory to participate in this party. And Hong Nyang jumps on the girl, saying that she must definitely go, after all this will be Princess Ling Li's first appearance, and besides, all four high-level concubines will be at the party, so it's an event that can't be lost. However, Mao Mao doesn't care much about this, and she notes that because Lady Gyokuyu has few ladies in waiting, her presence there will be indispensable, and what's more, she will certainly be in charge of testing the dishes, to check if they have poison. And well, the servant suggests giving Mao Mao a makeover to make her look fuller and more attractive to the men at the party, and in addition to taking care of that part, Hong Yang offers to give Mao Mao a really nice makeup, as she doesn't see no problem with the girl hiding her freckles from time to time. And when leaving there, Mao Mao mentally rehearses how she should act at the event, and soon she realizes that she will need to be very resilient to withstand such a hassle, and then she goes to the kitchen, and Hong Yang notices a good smell coming from there, and asks what the girl is doing. Then Mao Mao explains that it is a sweet made from ginger and tangerine, 
and the servant asks if she is making that sweet for the party, and she says yes, and in addition, she had also made an outfit with pockets, which she would wear for underneath his main clothing, and in this underwear Mao Mao will put some pocket heaters, to be able to better deal with the cold. And upon seeing this, the servant begs Mao Mao to do this for all the other girls too, and so she complies with the request and starts making the outfit. But she is interrupted by Jinchur and Basin, and the two ask her to make an outfit, with pockets for them too. But besides them, even the seamstress and the emperor's cook appear asking for the same thing. So she spends the night working on the clothes, and when finished, Mao Mao sighs with relief, and remembers that the day of the party is the next day. And meanwhile, Basin goes to his master to talk about the search for people with burns on their arms, and he says that he hasn't found anything so far, and upon hearing this, Jinchur becomes worried, and wishes that everything will go well at the party at Garden. And the next day, Gyokuyu was already ready then, the servants extol the beauty of Her Majesty, and Hongyang states that she is more beautiful than all the other women, and then she thanks him, and gives a necklace to each of her ladies-in-waiting, so that they are marked as their servants, and so no strange guy will bother them. And after that, the servants go to Mao Mao, to put makeup on her, and the girl shows complete astonishment at this situation, but the servants continue the procedure. And then, all the concubines gather together with their ladies-in-waiting, and Jinchur tells Li Xu that she will eagerly wait to see her at the party, and she is all in love with it. And Jinchur says that now only the Gyokuyu concubine is missing, and Basin notices that his master seems to favor the Gyokuyu concubine more for some reason. And well, she thanks all of Mao Mao's help, and the girl says she's happy to have been useful, and while they're talking, Jinchur appears there, and comments that Gyokuyu looks wonderful in red, and he says that the beautiful style is mysterious. Hers, it must come from her jade eyes. Well, he notices Mao Mao there, and decides to go check on her, and upon seeing her, Jinchur is paralyzed, as this is the first time he has seen her wearing makeup, but she says that she is not wearing makeup, but Jinchur says her freckles are gone. Then Mao Mao explains that the freckles were part of the makeup she already had, and when she took it off, the freckles disappeared with it, and Jinchur says that what she is saying makes no sense, and then she regrets having tried to argue back with him. But since she had said that, Mao Mao decides to confess the truth, and she explains that every day she used dry clay on her face to make her freckles, so he always saw her with makeup on, and the girl says that makeup isn't just for makeup purposes. Beauty. Then Jinchur asks her why she wants to have fake freckles, and she says it's to prevent herself from being taken to a dark alley, because even though she lived near brothels, the men didn't always leave there satisfied, and so she wouldn't be a victim of these guys, Mao Mao adopted the appearance of a short, ugly and skinny girl. And upon hearing this, he asks if they've already done something to her, and Mao Mao says no, in this case she was just kidnapped, and Jinchur apologizes for her security measures having failed, but she says it's okay, because it's not there is no way for the buyer to know whether it was an illegal kidnapping or an illegal sale. But still, he asks if this doesn't irritate her, and Mao Mao says yes, but she recognizes that Jinchur is not to blame for this, but he apologizes anyway, and then she notices that he is being sincere in what he says, and this is something very rare. And well, he says goodbye and says he will see her later at the party, and then Mao Mao notices that he left an ornament on her head when he touched her, and she wonders why he did that. Then the servants go to her and cry with envy, because they wanted to be in Mao Mao's place, and Gyokuyu goes to her and puts the ornament on her head again, and well, the event finally begins, and while everyone is distracted, one person puts a plate on the table. And well, all the servants are shivering from the cold, but they say that pocket heaters helped control the climate, and Mao Mao comments that being stuck in that cold is even worse. And then they begin the party's musical events, and upon seeing the performances, Mao Mao notices that they seem to be made to incite rivalry between them, and Gui Yuan says that the woman in front of them is the Empress Dowager. And she says that the girl gave birth to the Emperor when she was very young, and soon after had another son, but this second son was in very poor health to the point of not even being able to leave his room. But Gui Yuan comments that she saw him there a short time ago, and well, the ladies in waiting start to argue among themselves, and Lady Lihua's servants make fun of the other girl's appearance, 
and say that the fact that they are ugly affects the lady's reputation. Their lady. At this point, Guiyuan sighs with boredom, as the boring war between the representatives was about to begin and so she calls Mao Mao to another place, but one of Li Hua's servants comments that Gyokuyu recently hired a very ugly girl, and that would ruin her image. And upon hearing this, Mao Mao understands that the girl is talking about her, but she doesn't care at all, unlike Ying Hua, who took the pain for her. And Mao Mao is surprised by the girl's break, because she remembers when she scared the girl, and yet she is still full of anger and arrogance. And well, Ying Hua is still angry, and tells the girl to apologize to Mao Mao, whereupon she makes that same scary face as the other day, and the servant immediately freezes up and runs away. And then Ying Hua tries to console her friend, saying that she actually has a very pretty face, but Mao Mao says that she doesn't care about the teasing from the other servants, and she comments that it's time for them to change the heaters. And well, her friends stare at her and treat her like a poor thing again because Mao Mao pretended to be an ugly girl to avoid being kidnapped by perverted men, and this makes them feel very sorry. Furthermore, Ying Hua sympathizes with her because the girl endured a lot of bullying in the Crystal Palace, and with that, the girls understand why Master Jinshu treats Mao Mao so well. So they leave the girl alone, and Mao Mao notices that another fight between representatives is going on, and Ying Hua explains that they are the servants of the virtuous and pure concubines, and the girl explains that the virtuous concubine is 14 years old, and arrived after the pure concubine who is 35 years old. And for this reason, they don't get along very well, besides, these two were daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, so Mao Mao doesn't understand anything, and Gui Yuan says that this story is complicated to explain, but the girl tries, and she says that in the past, one of them was the concubine of the previous emperor, while the other was the concubine of the current emperor. However, the former emperor passed away, and with that, the previous emperor's concubine left the palace, and returned as the current emperor's concubine, and upon hearing this, Mao Mao remembers that at the time the emperor passed away, Adua was 30 years old, while Li Xu was 9. And although it's all just politics, Mao Mao finds it strange the fact that a 9-year-old girl became a concubine, and Hong Yang comments that this is really very strange, so Mao Mao starts to put the information together in her head, and remembers that they were both daughter-in-law and mother-in-law, and with that she discovers that Li Xu was the wife of the former emperor while she was still nine years old. And speaking of her, the girl appears there, and immediately looks with contempt at the servants, and Hong Yang says that Mao Mao must have certainly noticed that the girl is really very young, and when analyzing her clothes, Mao Mao understands that a dress white would suit the virtuous concubine more, but the girl chose a pink color precisely to clash with Lady Gyokuyu. And well, Hong Yang says that they will certainly need more pocket warmers soon, and Mao Mao takes charge of making them, but when she looks to the side, she realizes that Li Hua's servants have the flu due to the extreme cold. And then she takes the heaters to the girls, and says that they can hold them to stop the cold, but the servants are suspicious of her and start to sneak out, which Mao Mao insists on, and they run away. And then the girl goes back to her friends, and they comment that Mao Mao was very good in offering the heaters to the servants of the Crystal Palace, and well, a man gives an ornament to one of the girls at the party, and Ying Hua explains that they they do this to try to recruit talented female workers there. However, she says that there is also another secret reason for doing this, and so Mao Mao just continues doing his thing, at which Ying Hua gets angry and says that this secret reason is very interesting, therefore Mao Mao should show that he is more curious to know this. And the girl goes out to walk around the garden, until a guy appears and gives her a gift, but seeing that he has several of these gifts, Mao Mao understands that he is just giving this to the servants, to prevent them from being embarrassed for not gain nothing. And so she accepts, and the man introduces himself as Lahaku, and after that, her friends go to her to see what Mao Mao won, and she says it's just a prize for participating in the party, and well, Lady Li Hua goes up to her, and says that the girl deserved to receive even more gifts, and then she puts an ornament on Mao Mao's hair, and upon seeing this, her servants find this attitude strange, but the lady just tells them to follow her back, and Gui Yuan comments that Lady Gyokuyu won't like seeing that ornament on her at all, one of her servants, and well, Mao Mao positions himself behind his lady, and upon seeing the officers, 
she notices that Lehaku appears to be a very presentable man compared to them, and in addition to him, she notices that the previous officer is also well aligned and composed compared to the others. Then she notices that the shiny eunuch is not there, but she doesn't even care about that, and well, one of the servants appears there and asks Mao Mao to test a drink, and then she confirms that the smell does not appear to be altered. But still, she decides to drink, as this is also part of her work as a provider. And when looking to the side, she notices another provider servant, but she is afraid if she drinks the drink, and Mao Mao reflects that the life of a provider of poison is really disposable. But in her case, Mao Mao loves this profession, and dreams of the day when they will give her a pufferfish to test because she likes that feeling of numbness in her tongue when ingesting small doses of poison. Then she begins to travel, until the the servant comes and brings him another food to test, and Mao Mao notices that it is a dish called namasu, in this case it is the emperor's favorite food, and Mao Mao explains that she has seen this dish in the inner palace, and the time she has seen it, it was common to use black carp to accompany the dish but this time the food came only with jellyfish. And this already makes her suspicious, after all, the emperor's cook would never get the ingredient wrong in his favorite dish, and well, she notices that Li Xu is showing complete fear when trying the food, and she suggests that the girl just doesn't like fish. And then the girl behind her gives a slight evil smile, and the boys are in the audience watching them test the food, and Lehaku disapproves of the show, as he finds it not at all interesting but when he looks better at the girls, he notices that Mao Mao is there too. And when she tries one of the dishes, she is amazed, but warns that there is poison in that dish, so she leaves there, and the servants notice that the minister drank the poison soup and passed out. And well, Mao Mao drinks water to contain the poison, and Jin Shi goes to her, and the girl greets him with a big smile, but soon she realizes that she ended up getting too excited about the taste of the poison, and accidentally smiled at the eunuch. Then he takes her by the arm to take her to the infirmary, but she says that she has already coughed up the poison and is fine, but in her mind, she thinks she should have swallowed the poison, to have an even better experience. And well, Mao Mao asks Jin Shi to give him the rest of that poison soup, and upon hearing this he calls her an idiot, and she says she's just trying to perfect her job as a poison tester. But Jin Shi explains to her that when she went to cough out the poison, someone else drank the soup and ended up fainting, in this case, it was a minister, and thanks to what this guy did, this became a big incident. And then Mao Mao gives him a medicine to make people vomit, and on the way, she notices that he has a different ornament in his hair, but in addition, she also notices that his collar is messy, and he's not so radiant anymore, as it usually is. But regardless of what happened to him, Mao Mao feels that this is the attitude that a boy his age should have. Well, she goes to the infirmary and takes some medicine to stop vomiting, and Mao Mao is impressed with the medicine there, because they also function properly. And after she vomits everything, Jin Shi says it's time for them to talk about who could have tried to poison concubine Gyokuyu, but first Mao Mao suggests that they bring Lady Li Xu to participate in this conversation too. And then they take her to the room, and the girl already shows all her interest in Jin Shi, and he, in turn, responds by being cordial with her, and says that Mao Mao wants to talk to Li Xu. Then the girl notices that Li Xu is acting strange when touching her arm, and when she lifts up the sleeve of her blouse, she notices that Li Xu's arm is all red, and with that she discovers that the girl is allergic to fish, and not could have eaten it. And upon hearing this, Jin Shi doesn't know what Mao Mao means, and so she explains that allergic people can't eat such types of food, and in her case, Mao Mao can't eat buckwheat flour pasta. However, Jin Shi is surprised by the fact that she can eat poison without compromising her health, and she explains that she worked hard to build up a tolerance to different poisons. As for wheat, when eating it, her throat starts to swell, making it difficult for her to breathe, and she reveals that it was difficult to adjust the amount she can eat of this food, as with just a few doses she already suffers from a skin rash. And so she finishes the explanation of allergies, and Maya asks how Li Xu's stomach is, but she doesn't say anything and just asks how she found out about her allergy, and Mao Mao says that the inner palace was responsible for preparing the food for the garden party, but Namasu was using a different ingredient than usual. And then Mao Mao suggests that Lady Li Xu's food was swapped with Gyokuyu's by mistake, and well, she explains that in that case Li Xu just had red marks on her arms, but that could have been more serious, 
and she says that giving that kind of food for Li Xu, knowing her allergy, is the same as poisoning her. Then the girl servant begins to tremble with fear, and Mao Mao asks if she would be Lady Li Xu's food provider, and the servant responds yes, and then Mao Mao gives her a note of things she should pay attention to, to avoid Li Xu suffer from your allergy. But she warns the servant that she must strictly follow what is written there, because if she makes any mistake, not even the best doctor in the palace will be able to find a way to save Lady Li Xu, and after applying all this psychological pressure, Mao Mao understands that the servant will no longer do anything wrong. And after leaving the infirmary, Genshur touches her and questions what that all meant, and Mao Mao takes his hand away from her and says that she is too inferior for him to be touching her and he tells her that she is the only one who treats him like that. But for her, the other girls are just being nice to him by letting him touch them without restrictions, and well, Mao Mao asks to leave, as she needs to communicate what happened to Lady Gyokuyu. But before she leaves, Genshur asks why she asked to call the provider too, and she responds that she just wanted to warn her to be more careful with Lady Lishu, so he asks if she was saying that the error was on the part of the servants. And Mao Mao says he's not sure, after all she's just a mere lady in waiting. And upon hearing this, Genshur notices that he won't be able to get so much information out of the girl, but he decides to ask one last question. In this case he wants to know if the target of the poisoning would have been Lady Li Shu, and Mao Mao says that if the other foods weren't were poisoned too, so she would be the target. And after that, she finally manages to leave the room, and notes that she had a very tiring day, and Basin wonders if this had anything to do with the incident in the woods that other day, as for his master, he just wonders who would have done something like that. Mao Mao wakes up after dreaming with her father, and she wonders how he is, and the girl notices that she ended up waking up very late, because her friends told her to go and rest. And then she puts on her freckle makeup and goes to her lady, but Gyokuyu says that she should take the day off, but she insists on working that day, and the lady notices that the girl still has freckles, and Mao Mao says that is uncomfortable without them. And well, Gyokuyu changes the subject, and comments that Gao Shan showed up there in the morning and hasn't left yet, and because he seemed bored, she told him to go get herbs, and upon hearing this, Mao Mao feels that he's a guy very helpful and good people, and possibly wins the hearts of the ladies in waiting easily. And then the girl changes the subject and asks if she can use the living room, to which her lady gives her permission, and Gao Shan goes to her and says that Jin Shi told him to give her that soup, and when analyzing it, Mao Mao notices that it is the soup that Lady Gyokuyu should have eaten. And then she explains that silver corrodes quickly, so that soup must already have a bad taste, and she asks if he even touched the bowl, to which Gao Shan says no, and explains that he just scooped up some of the soup with a spoon, to check if it had poison, and after that he just wrapped the bowl in a cloth. And then Mao Mao takes a cotton ball, powder and brush, and she explains that in the medicine store where she worked, they put dye in containers that couldn't be touched, and the technique she will use is basically the same. She will put a little powder on the cotton ball, to be able to dust the bowl with it, and finally Mao Mao will remove the excess, and this way she has access to the fingerprints of whoever touched the bowl, and the girl explains that the marks are even more visible on silver, as it is made from a material that corrodes very easily. And then, Gao Shan suggests that the fingerprints she located are from people who touched the bowl after it was cleaned, and Mao Mao explains that the size and location of the fingerprints allows them to get a sense of how people held the bowl. In this she remembers how they handled the bowl on the day of the party, and the girl suggests that the container was carried by four people, Firstly three people would have touched the sides of the bowl, in this case it would be the person who prepared the soup, the person who carried her, and the provider poisoned herself from Lady Li Shu. And after the three of them, there was a person from outside who touched the edge of the bowl, and Mao Mao says that this was probably the person who poisoned the food, but Gao Shan wonders why there is a fingerprint from a poison provider on a plate. Poison. And Mao Mao responds that Lady Li Shu's provider changed the bowl as a form of harassment, but without knowing that the soup was poisoned, Gao Shan is unable to understand how a lady in waiting would harass a high ranking concubine. And then he asks the girl to explain that story better, and Mao Mao already warns that everything she will say next is mere speculation 
and she starts talking about the flashy dress that Lady Li Xu was wearing. And Mao Mao says that normally if a concubine chose a dress of a color that conflicted with Lady Gyokuyu's dress, the ladies in waiting would recommend that his concubine wear another dress. But all of Li Xu's servants were dressed in white, to imply that Lady Li Xu did not know how to read between the lines. And then she remembers that on that day, the Lady Soft concubine Aduo, was scolding concubine Li Xu's servants for not doing their job properly. After all it was most likely the ladies who recommended that dress to Lady Li Xu, and she would have worn the dress without knowing it was doing something wrong. And with that Gao Shan understands why they changed the dishes just out of pure harassment, as this persecution was already happening before, and Mao Mao comments that Li Xu's ladies didn't know about the soup being poisoned, and this ended up saving their lives. Of Gyokuyu after all. In this Mao Mao explains a little about Lady Li Xu, and informs that she became the concubine of the previous emperor when she was still young, and after that she ended up leaving the inner palace, but the responsibility of a wife would be to sacrifice everything of herself to dedicate herself to the her husband, and because she didn't do it, it seems very indecent to everyone that she wants to marry her husband's son. And Mao Mao says that the mark on the edge of the bowl was left by the person who poured the poison, as that person probably held the bowl by the edge while mixing the poison, and so the girl finalizes her guesses. However, Gao Shun still has one more question, he wants to know why she tried to protect the taster the day before, and Mao Mao explains that the life of a servant has no value compared to the life of a concubine, especially if that life is of the food taster, that is, she just defended the servant out of pure sympathy. Thereupon Gao Shan promises that he will try to explain this calmly to Master Jinshu, and well, Mao Mao feels that he should thank the servants for changing his lady's food, after all she is only alive because of this unsuccessful bullying. And meanwhile, Gao Shan finishes explaining to his master, and Jin Shi suggests that this incident was done by someone inside the palace, but he feels too tired to think about these things, so Gao Shan warns him that he is leaving transparency to your real face. But his master explains that there is no one there to see it, and so Gao Shan says hello to him, and says that he is there, so Jin Shi should act and stop being lazy, and Gao Shan reminds him that he hasn't taken off the ornament yet. Hair. So he throws the ornament on the table and asks Gao Shan to take care of it, and then he asks Jin Shi to take better care of that object, as only special individuals have access to it. And well, the next day, Xiaolan asks if Mao Mao received any decorations, and she replies that she received several, and the girl comments that with these decorations Mao Mao will be able to leave the inner palace. And upon hearing this, she jumps on Xiaolan, and asks her friend to give more details about what she just said, and the girl explains that she cannot meet outside men when she is in the inner palace, but if she can by special permission, a man may accompany a servant outside the palace. And with this explanation, Mao Mao finally understands the real meaning of the decorations at the garden party, and then she thanks her friend for giving her this information, and says that she will put all of this into practice. And well, she remembers that she received four ornaments in total, but only two were from men. But she remembers that one of those men was Jin Shi, so she only considers the ornament she got from the other man. And then she sends a message to Lihaku, and upon reading it, he notices that the girl took his consolation ornament very seriously. However Lihaku feels that if the girl is pretty, it would be a waste to ignore her. And he reads that the girl in question received an ornament in the Jade Palace, and Lihaku says that he only gave an ornament in that place, and when he remembers who the girl was, he starts thinking about what to say to reject her. And then she goes to meet him, and explains that her only interest is to return to her family, so he asks if she knows what that ornament means, and she explains that she could return to the house temporarily if he accompanied her. And upon hearing this, Lihaku calls her indecent, as a mere lady-in-waiting shouldn't expect that from an important military man, and then he slams his elbow on the table, and asks if she is thinking of using him to go see his wife, family, and Mao Mao responds that she intended to give him something of equal value, so she puts three letters of introduction on the table, and asks if he would be interested in a session with the girls from the Verdigris house, and upon seeing this, Lihaku is impressed, because the price of a night in this brothel is the equivalent of a year's salary, and to excite him even more, Mao Mao mentions the names of three important princesses that he could relate to, but to therefore, he will need cover letters. However, he believes that this is too good to be true, 
and Mao Mao takes advantage of his disbelief to impose even more pressure on Lihaku, and she says that she will have to ask for help from another man in which she shows that she still has two decorations. And Lihaku analyzes that those decorations are from men of higher rank than him, and this makes him want even more to accept Mao Mao's proposal and even though he suspects it to be a lie he feels that he will never have that again. Opportunity, if true. And then he ends up giving into prison, and when he returns to his friends, they are all happy for Mao Mao but they notice that the girl is acting as if this isn't something very important. And then Hong Nyan comments that Mao Mao certainly has no idea what these decorations mean, and Gyokuyu says she's looking forward to seeing Jin Shir's face when she discovers this. And well, after a day of Mao Mao's departure, Jin Shir goes there to see her, but Gyokuyu informs him that the girl left the palace with another man, and upon hearing this, Jin Shir is shocked, and she laughs in his face. And meanwhile, Mao Mao explains that the pleasure district where she was raised is not too far away, and on the way she comments about the three princesses of the Verdigris house being idolized by everyone, to the point of being even venerated, so just getting to know them now it is an honor. And well, they arrive at the pleasure district, and Mao Mao explains that many girls who enter the brothel do so wanting to be like the princesses of the greenhouse, but this is not something easy to achieve. Well, they come face to face with the Verdigris house, and the girl tells Lehaku that that place provides courtesans from mid-level to high-level courtesans, then a lady known to Mao Mao appears, and the girl goes there to greet her, but by calling her old, the lady shows that she is with his physique up to date and puts Mao Mao to fly. Then Lehaku asks who that strange lady is, and she explains that she is the owner of the Verdigris house, and then the lady asks her servant to bring Princess Perrin, to meet her new client. Then the girl takes him into the brothel, and the lady scolds Mao Mao for having disappeared for more than 10 months, and the girl asks if she read her letter of explanation, and the lady says that she did, and that's basically why she's letting Lahaku have fun with the princesses, even though it's just a letter of introduction. And Mao Mao says that he will also pay for the service with half the money he earned in the inner palace, but the lady says that that is not enough to pay Perrin, and so Mao Mao tries to negotiate that, but the lady refuses, and says that will put the remaining money toward her debt. However, the girl claims that she will never be able to pay that, and the lady decides to change her mind, and just asks Mao Mao to bring more young clients to them, so she can suck a lot more money out of them. And well, Mao Mao leaves the brothel and heads to her father's house, and on the way she reflects on the difference between one place and another, as there are only things that are not good in her region. And arriving in front of her house, the girl notices that nothing has changed since her departure, and then she finally finds her father, and begins to talk about her stories in the palace. And finally, Mao Mao explains that she still has work time to do there, and so she will have to return to the palace in two days, well, the girl complains about being tired and needing to take a shower, so her father tells her to go take a shower at the Verdigris house the next day, and while she sleeps, her father feels that there is a certain irony in his daughter being sheltered in the inner palace. The next day, Mao Mao wakes up, and when she sees her father working in the field, she comments to herself that he should stop working, as he was already very old, but she remembers that his passion is to make medicines with herbs. What plant? So Mao Mao decides to let those thoughts go. And well, she notices a girl knocking on the door, and wonders who she could be, so she pulls her by the arm and takes her to a place where there are some poison people, and then Mao Mao goes to them and says that they will need to check if there is something in the victims' throats. And then they give both of them mouth breathing, and Mao Mao asks them to bring charcoal, and after that, everyone is fine, and the girls decide to go make some tea, and in the meantime, Mao Mao explains that the two weanlings were a Ceresa and his client. And when analyzing the environment, she notices that the place was stinking of alcohol and tobacco, and in addition, there were two bottles on the floor and some wheat sticks, and next to it there was also a pipe and tobacco leaves, from which Mao Mao understands that the two went over the limit in the mess. And well, the girl from before appears with the coal, and then she asks the girl to bring a tablet, so she can write, and as she writes, Mao Mao explains that her father is in the field, and she asks the girl go get it too, and so she does. And Mao Mao says he has already crushed the coal and her father explains that now they need to mix it with herbs and give them both to drink, so one of the girls goes to the courtesan to give her the medicine, and she asks about her client, 
and she tells him that he is already well. And meanwhile, Mao Mao's father analyzes the place, and then he asks his daughter what type of poison she thinks they both took, whereupon she stops in front of him, and explains that her father asks these questions precisely so that she learns things. And well, she responds that tobacco leaves are a deadly poison, so that was what caused the poisoning, and her father explains that she was right not to give them water to drink, as the gastric juices in the stomach can prevent the absorption of poison in some cases, so diluting them would have the opposite effect. But having said that, he questions what would happen if the poison was dissolved in the water, and when analyzing the vomit again, Mao Mao realizes that there are no leaves there, which is why she is surprised as to how she could have missed this detail. And she understands that if the poison were dissolved in water, perhaps dissolving it even more, would give a good result, and well, after this conversation, the brothel lady in the house apologizes for all that trouble, and then she serves a snack, to do a favor, and furthermore, she offers some money to Mao Mao's father, for saving one of his girls, but he tries to refuse the money, but his daughter reminds him that he hasn't even paid the rent that month yet, so he should accept that money, and well, Mao Mao returns to theorizing about this supposed poisoning, and she deduces that this could be a double suicide, after all this is not very difficult to happen in the pleasure district, and she explains that generally guys who cannot afford to pay a courtesan, practice this act, as for the courtesans, the majority who commit this act are those who still have some work time. However, she notices that the customer was very well dressed, and what's more, he's a handsome guy, and that's why she deduces that he wasn't a guy with money or women problems. And although her father doesn't like seeing her judge people based on stereotypes, Mao Mao decides to do it anyway, and she suggests that this client isn't the type who would take poison with a courtesan because he's hopeless about his future. And so she decides to go check on them, and on the way she remembers that the client's health condition appears to be more serious, and well, when she gets there, Mao Mao catches the little girl in the act about to stab the client, but she interrupts her, and the girl tells her not to interfere and says that that guy deserves death, so she goes after Mao Mao to get the knife back, but she is restrained, and upon hearing all this noise, a courtesan appears there and call Mao Mao to talk a little, and she explains that that man was a problematic client who always brought problems with him, and she reports that that client seduced the courtesans with sweet words, and insinuated that he would buy them but when he got tired of the courtesan in question, he threw her went out and repeated the same speech with another girl. And because of this, she gained the hatred of many people, to the point where several women tried to stab him to death, and in addition, they tried to poison him before. And she explains that he is spoiled by his father, a rich merchant who solves all his son's problems based on money, and recently he would have asked Mao Mao's father to hire guards for him, so that he could go to the brothels more safely. And she says that that little girl's older sister was already used and discarded by this man, and the courtesan explains that on the day of purchase he simply cancelled the deal out of the blue, just to feed false hopes in the girl. And she understands why the little girl can't forgive him, besides, the courtesan who took the poison was also close to her, so Mao Mao questions why they didn't banish him from the brothel, and she explains that whoever fell in love with him, it was the courtesan herself. And then Mao Mao understands that spreading that they attempted a double suicide would only cause more headaches, and upon analyzing the situation further, she notices that they only served her a snack because she saved the life of a rich merchant's son. And upon returning home, she notices that the fact that she was home at that time was just a coincidence. But as for her father, she probably knew he would be out, as she shops with him often. And besides, Mao Mao is also surprised by the fact that the girl went to call a missing apothecary instead of a doctor, and well, her father regrets that her return home was so troubled, and then asks her father to show her the money he received, and upon reasoning a little more, Mao Mao notices that their idea was to buy them with money indirectly. And well, she thinks about the courtesan's client again, and remembers the rumors about him being a smart guy, and taking that into consideration, she deduces that he wouldn't commit a double suicide for romance, and maybe he could have been forced to do the act. However, her father warns her that she cannot just rely on supposition, and she realizes that her father already understood the whole situation, and so Mao Mao returns to reasoning about everything that happened, to try to understand what was happening. And after a brief reflection, she understands that it was not a double suicide attempt, but rather murder, and this explains the wheat sticks around, 
the poison water and the two separate drinks with different colors. And at the end of the afternoon, the girl thinks about this subject again and understands that it was in fact an assassination attempt, and she explains that the courtesan used drinks laced with tobacco poison but the man was careful enough to be accompanied of his guards, and with that Mao Mao wonders how the courtesan could have made him take the poison. And when she briefly thinks about it, she quickly understands how she gained his trust, in which case she decided to take the poison too, because if she was fine after taking the substance, he wouldn't have any problems either. However, she used a trick to avoid taking the poison, she put two drinks and a glass on the table, and after that, she put the lighter drink first in the glass, and then put the drink with a heavier thickness. And after that, she used the wheat stick to drink only the bottom layer, so that she could not arouse suspicion, and when passing the drink to him to drink, the customer drank the most poisonous layer of the drink. And after he fell to the ground in agony, the courtesan also took the top layer of the drink, but a small amount that wouldn't kill her, and she would have done it in the morning precisely to increase the chances of killing him, and although she seemed like a fragile woman, she was actually very smart. And meanwhile, the little girl advises the courtesan to go back to bed, and Mao Ma finds it strange again that the little girl went after an apothecary instead of a doctor, after all, this irresponsibility and lack of care could kill her sister, therefore Mao Mao deduces that she also already knew that the courtesan would survive. However, she realizes that she is thinking too much, because the courtesan herself showed sympathy for that little girl, moreover, that generous lady also leaves the story confusing, and then she remembers her father's advice about not saying things based only on supposition. And well, Mao Mao notes that the pleasure district is not so different from the inner palace, as that place is both a garden and a cage, and it's stale, trapped air poisons everyone around it, plus the courtesans also eat the poison around them, with the intention of becoming sweet poison. And then she comments that she is not aware of what will happen to that courtesan, but she supposes that that problematic customer claims that she tried to poison him, but on the other hand the brothel can accuse him of ruining their merchandise. And after worrying about this subject, she decides to leave this story aside, after all, it is very difficult to live in that place if she worries about everything that happens around her. And well, Mimi shows up there to take a shower with her, and the girl is surprised by the fact that Mao Mao already needs to go back to the inner palace, and then she explains that she still needs to stay there for a year, and Mimi says that everyone was worried when she disappeared out of nowhere, including the old brothel owner. And well, Mimi hugs her and starts playing with the girl, asking if she had missed it too, and the next day, she says goodbye to her father, and notes that the three days at home flew by. And upon arriving at the brothel, she finds Lahaku duly satiated and satisfied, and Mao Mao reflects on the pain it will be for him to return to the land of mortals after tasting the nectar of the gods. And with that, she deduces that they can suck him in completely if they just have to be kind to him and not kill him, but in any case, she remembers that she will have to cover the money that was missing from his program. And well, when she arrives at the inner palace, Jinsher looks at her seriously, and then she decides to find a way to escape that situation, but he calls her so they can talk in the entrance hall. And when she gets there, she already notices that he is angry about something, and Jinsher asks how her trip to his house went, and she says that everyone was fine, so he changes the subject and asks what this guy called Lahaku is like. And Mao Mao explains that he was her guarantor, and upon hearing this, Jinsher asks if she knows what that means, and she says that a high-level officer with a good track record can serve as a guarantor, and she reveals that took a consolation ornament from him. At this Jinsher feels humiliated for having lost to a consolation ornament, and he explains that even though he gave her an ornament, Mao Mao did not choose him to be her guarantor, and upon hearing this, she understands the reason for his discomfort, he he would have been irritated that she hadn't asked for his help. And for Mao Mao, he's pretty weird, after all, it's much better not to get involved in other people's personal problems, and for her, that just means he wants a little attention, even if it's to attract trouble to himself. And well, she apologizes to Jean Shur, and explains that she didn't talk to him just because she couldn't think of a reward he might like, and upon hearing this, he questions whether she would have given any reward to this Lahaka guy, and she claims that she gave him a night of happy dreams, when he gets everything wrong and drops his cup, and Mao Mao says goodbye, and when he returns to the other servants, Gyokuyu starts laughing at that situation. In the eunuch's refectory, a man he asks for more drinks, 
and a man at the next table looks at him with some disdain, as he thinks the alcohol has finished him off. And then the men start to laugh at the man, at which point one of the men pours him more drink, and looks closely at something, and as for Jinshir, he is still in a bad mood about the incident from the previous night, but Gao Shan reminds him that he is now in the work, so you should pay more attention to things around you. This makes his master strange, as he is not usually that cunning, and so he places the pile of work on his desk, and Gao Shan remembers a day when he had difficulty getting details of what happened to concubine Gyokuyu. Because she had said that the bail payment was a meeting with a popular courtesan, and upon discovering this, Gao Shan is impressed by the connections that Mao Mao has, but he is not sure what exactly the Jinsha understood with Gyokuyu's explanation. And then he remembers when his master had finished his work in a hurry, just to accompany the girl. But all this was of no use, as she had already left the palace with another man, and Gao Shan understands that this must certainly have traumatized him. And well, when he picks up one of the documents, he notices that it is a bill that only benefits bureaucrats, and as the work continues, at a certain point they are interrupted by a desperate man. Then Gao Shan asks him to deal with work matters later, but the man states that he is not there to resolve work matters, and then he informs him about something related to Mr. Conan, and everyone runs out of the room. And the next day, they report this to Lady Gyokuyu, and she says that this news is terrible, and Mao Mao realizes that apparently some important bureaucrat has died, and although it may sound rude, she is not capable of feeling compassion for a complete stranger, therefore she doesn't even care about that person's death. And she explains that this man was in his fifties, and the cause of his death was excessive drinking, and that's why she believes that he just brought what he wanted, and well, Jinsha questions her if Mao Mao believes that the sir really died from alcohol. And then she explains that anyone who likes alcohol knows that drinking too much is bad for the body, after all, drinking too much for many years can cause damage to the organs, leaving them completely deteriorated, and if the person drinks too much at once, she could die instantly. Then Jinsha says that the report said that the man was drinking a lot at a banquet, and Mao Mao says that if that's the case, he really died from too much alcohol, but Jinsha explains that Mr. Conan knows how to control himself and doesn't drink to that extent. And then she discovers that the dead man's name is Conan, a soldier capable of drinking an entire bottle of alcohol alone, and so Jinsha serves the alcohol that the gentleman was drinking the day he died. And he explains that the bottle that Conan was drinking ended up falling on the floor and breaking, and this is a small sample that they managed to collect from the drink, in this Mao Mao understands that her work will be more difficult, as she will not have the bottle to examine whether it had poison or not. And when looking at him, she notices a tired look on Jinsha's face, and then she deduces that he is just aware that he is asking too much of her again, and when she sees him like that, she notices that he has a golden glow, much more childish than usual. And well, when she drinks the drink, Mao Mao notices that there is a mixture of sweet and savory flavors, and then she says that that the drink has a unique flavor, and Jinsha understands that everything is normal until then, as Mr. Conan liked things like that. In this he reports that he used to like spicy things, until the man explained to him that he developed an appetite for sweet things out of nowhere, reaching the point where his meals were composed of sweet foods. Then Mao Mao cuts him off and says that it causes diabetes, and Jinsha asks her not to ruin his moment of fantasy by bringing him to reality, and well, she asks if there was salt in the banquet served to Mr. Conan, and he says that yes, for they served salt, moon cakes and dried meats. And then he asks if he should provide those same foods, and Mao Mao says that he doesn't need to, and she just asks Jinsha to bring the bottle that the gentleman was drinking, but he says again that the bottle broke into pieces, and she says this is not a problem. And well, Gao Shan gives her a report and the victim's bottle, and when she reads the report she immediately understands what is happening, and then she licks part of the bottle, and finds that there is no poison in it. And so Mao Mao collects some of the powder that was in the bottle and throws it into the fire, and with that Jinsha notices that it was salt, and she remembers him saying that Mr. Conan had developed a taste for sweet foods, and after that he would only have eight sweet things. However, she informs that there is an extreme amount of salt in that bottle, and although salt is a necessary ingredient for the human body, it cannot be consumed in excess, otherwise it becomes poisonous. From this she deduces that the salt in the bottle was slowly dissolving with his drink, reaching the point where he ingested a lethal amount of salt, but Jinsha asks if he hadn't noticed the salty taste of the drink, 
and Mao Mao states that he didn't feel it anything, for she suggests that he was slowly losing the ability to taste salt, and she explains that she learned about Conan being a diligent and talented bureaucrat who lived a monastic life. And many years ago he lost his wife and child to an epidemic disease, and after that he became a workaholic, and his only joy was alcohol and sweets, and she explains that there is a disease that makes a person lose the sense of taste. And this disease can occur due to an unbalanced diet or stress, and diligent people often suppress their emotions, and the weight of carrying this burden can trigger this disease. That said, Jean Chur still wonders who put the salt in the bottle, and although Mao Mao isn't responsible for investigating this, she informs him that they put salt in the alcohol from the night before too, and she deduces that the person responsible for adding that extra salt to the alcohol possibly doesn't like diligent and honest people, or maybe they could have tried to prank Conan for not liking him, but seeing that he still continued drinking the alcohol without realizing it was salty, they increased the amount more and more until he could taste the salt. And then Jin Chur whispers something to Gao Shan, and he leaves the room, Mao Mao feels bad about this, because she gave them enough information to find the culprit, and she doesn't want to be the cause of anyone's punishment, but Jin Chur thanks her, and says that she helped a lot. And when she looks at him better, she notices that he is dressed in an obsidian tassel, and this shows that he is sorry for this death. And then she comments that this Conan must have been a great man, and Jin Chur says yes, as he was his tutor when he was younger. And upon seeing this sentimental side of him, Mao Mao starts to consider Jin Chur a normal guy, and he suddenly remembers that he was supposed to give her a gift, and so he presents her with a bottle of alcohol, but asks her not to get caught with that out there. Then he acts strange again and comments that she doesn't seem so grateful for the gift, and she just reminds him that he still has a lot of work to do, so she advises him to do it now, so as not to accumulate it later. However, he states that he is working, and she asks what that work would be, and Jin Chur explains that he is working on a bill, the idea of which is to improve the well-being of young people, keeping them away from drinking, and for that the project wants prohibit those under 20 from drinking. And upon hearing this Mao Mao gets scared and begs him not to let this law pass, but he says that this is beyond his reach, and well, that night, a woman ends up drowning and so they call Mao Mao to analyze the matter, her state, and then she informs that the body is in good condition, considering that she drowned, and she questions where the body was found, and one of the servants explains that the body was floating in an external pit, and based on the girl's clothes, he believes let her be a servant in the back palace, and then she turns her gaze to the doctor, and upon seeing him act like this, she confirms that he is in fact nothing more than a charlatan doctor, after all he is the one who should take care of the girl's autopsy, but he tries to push this responsibility onto her. However, she says that she can't do that, as she can't touch bodies, so Jean Chur appears there, and comments that she seems to be very calm about seeing dead people, and then she explains that she is already used to this type of scene. After all, the pleasure district is just one street away from complete chaos. And Jean Chur asks why she can't touch dead bodies, and she says that she's just following her father's advice, as he said that if she starts touching bodies, soon she'll get addicted and start digging graves too, all because of curiosity about death. However, he advised her to never cross that line in her life, and taking this into consideration Jean Chur orders the doctor to do the autopsy, and he accepts, but becomes scared again when he sees the servant's body. And well, Mao Mao analyzes the girl and notices that she is tall and has shoes made of wood, in addition to that she also has bands on one of her feet, and her toes are red, and then she deduces that the water was very cold. And at the end of the afternoon, Jean Chur says that the servant was at her job normally until yesterday, so the guard believes that she climbed the wall the night before and threw herself into the water, basically she jumped to commit self-ending. And then he asks her what she thinks about that, and Mao Mao says that she's still not sure if the girl really threw herself into the water, or if it was something else. However she claims that it would be impossible for her to do it all alone. For there were no ladders on the wall and no other tools to climb, moreover, the inner palace wall is four times her height, so it would be difficult to climb the wall without tools. However, Mao Mao says that it is still possible to do this, and she reminds them of the ghost incident that occurred a while ago, where the concubine Fuyo climbed the wall to dance in the moonlight, and finding it very strange, Mao Mao decided to investigate to find out how she climbed the wall. And finally, 
she ended up discovering it but she says that this is an unfeasible method to be used by ordinary women, especially women with lotus feet like that servant. And she explains that lotus feet are common in places where small feet are considered beautiful. However not all women adhere to this custom, but Mau Mau reports that she often sees this way of walking in the inner palace. And well, if they ruled out the possibility that it was a suicide, Jean Cher asks if this could be a murder, and Mao Mao says that she can't say anything, the only certainty she has is that the servant was alive when she fell into the pit, as her fingers were red and bloody, possibly because she scratched the wall several times to try to climb the wall. Then Mao Mao goes to the window with a plant, and reflects that she would never think of taking her own life, and besides, she would also hate it if someone killed her, because if she died, she wouldn't be able to test any more drugs or poisons. And then Jean Cher goes to her and asks what she's thinking, and she says she's thinking about what kind of poison she would use if she wanted to kill herself, and he gets it all wrong, and thinks she wants to drag him up, but she explains that this is not the case. And she talks about us not knowing when we are going to die, because even if she doesn't want to take her own life, a malicious person can go there and cause her death, just like what happened to Mr. Conan and then she states that destiny cannot be fought. In this, several memories of near death pass through Mao Mao's mind, and after these seconds of reflection, she asks that if one day she needs to be executed by Jean Cher, that he do it with poison, and upon hearing this, he does not understand why she's saying this out of the blue. And Mao Mao explains that if she makes a mistake, he will probably be the one to give the orders for her execution, in which he just stares at her statically, and she realizes that she ended up being hasty in talking about these things, and so she says that she can be executed anyway. Any other way too. However, Jin Cher asks again why she is having these conversations, and Mao Mao says that because she is part of the common people, her life can be taken away for the slightest mistake she makes, but Jin Cher states that he would never execute her for anything. In this she says that she is not talking about him wanting to do it or not, she is just wanting to know whether or not he could choose the way she would be executed, but in saying this, she again feels like she said something problematic. And then she decides to leave to avoid further confusion, and then Mao Mao comments that he learned that the dead servant was at the garden party when the poisoning occurred, and apparently the investigators found a suggestive letter, which would say that she had in fact given enough in his life, and with that they considered this case solved. And well, Gao Shan goes to his master to give him a report, but Jin Cher says that it has been two months since he asked his servant to find people with burns on their arms, and so Gao Shan apologizes for the delay, but in the end he found out that the person behind that incident was a person of a higher level than he had imagined. And he was talking about Feng Ming, the Granada Palace, and also the concubine Aduo's chief lady-in-waiting, and after having access to all this information, Jin Cher asks Gao Shan to leave. That morning, Jin Qi sits down to drink and think about everything that happened, and the next day Xiaolan talks about the servant from the palace in Granada who drowned the night before, and she says that it was probably her who had poisoned Lady Li Xu's food at the Feast of Garden. And Xiaolan wonders if she would have done that because she would have been Aduo's concubine before, and speaking of her, Xiaolan says that she will lose the title of concubine and will be replaced by a younger concubine. And then Mao Mao explains that Aduo is a year younger than the emperor, being 35 years old, and they both would have lost a son while the emperor was still a prince, and the fact that this happened is very regrettable, because the system of the inner palace is made precisely to create several babies. Then she remembers that Lady Li Hua also lost her son, and she wonders if something like that could happen to her too if she doesn't have another son, besides, there's no way to guarantee that Gyokuyu will continue to love the emperor, after all, even the most beautiful flowers end up withering over time, and this can happen to their relationship too. And after explaining this, Xiaolan decides to go back to work, and Mao Mao gives her a snack left over from the previous night's tea party, and the girl gets excited and comments that these parties must really be very good. But Mao Mao doesn't agree with this statement so much, as tea parties are also a form of work for a concubine, and upon returning to work, Inghua asks for her help in organizing another tea party, and Mao Mao comments that they are trying hard, and the girl explains that they will receive a visit from a high-level concubine, Lady Li Xu, so they must leave the place very well organized. And then Mao Mao notices that politics has spread even to the inner palace, so Gyokuyu goes to Li Xu to start the meeting, and Mao Mao understands that meeting as an information gathering, 
and in addition, she also notices that the girls around her seem to treat Li Xu more cautiously than when the emperor is present. And Mao Mao explains that Gyokuyu takes the information she wants in a calm and well-articulated way, and this just shows how skilled she is as a concubine, and she says that she heard rumors about Gyokuyu sending all the information she gets directly to her family, and because they deal with commerce, it is important for them to stay up to date with what is happening. And well, that girl from before looks at Mao Mao again with a face of terror, and she doesn't understand anything, after all, the concubine looks at her as if she were going to die, and as for Li Xu's servants, they are not paying any attention to her concubine, but they also don't seem to be implicating him, so Mao Mao understands that the report he gave to Genshur may be wrong. And Gyokuyu serves a tea of orange peels boiled in honey to the concubine, but she just stares at the cup without reacting, and Mao Mao notices that she is also not capable of ingesting honey, and meanwhile, the servants whisper, saying that she is very fresh for food. At this Mao Mao gives a signal to Gyokuyu, who immediately understands and proposes to get something else for the concubine to drink, and then Mao Mao turns his gaze to the servants, and realizes that his report was unfortunately correct, as their implication was still visible. And at the end of the afternoon, the other servants exempt her from cleaning, and tell her to rest, when Genshur appears there, and asks how the tea party was with the concubines Gyokuyu and Li Xu, and upon seeing him, she becomes suspicious of him, to have some part in this, and comments that he really found it strange that the tea party happened out of nowhere, and then she responds that the party was peaceful, as the two spent the whole time having fun, and after that she tries to leave the place, but Jinshur holds her to talk more, and reveals that she found out about the poisoning at the garden party having done by the suicidal servant. And speaking of her, he asks if Mao Mao thinks she really killed herself, and she says she won't be responsible for determining that, and then he asks why a common servant poisoned concubine Li Xu, and she says she doesn't know. The answer, he asks her to help him at the palace in Granada from the next day onwards, and she says yes, because there is no way she can refuse to obey him, and at dawn, she comments that the mansions there are painted with the colors of their owners. Gyokuyu's Jade Palace has the feel of a family home, Liwa's Crystal Palace has a feeling of elegance and nobility, while concubine Aduo's Granada Palace is more practical and without many unnecessary decorations. And well, Fengmin apologizes for calling them so suddenly, and says he's happy to be able to work with them during these next three days, and since Jinshur didn't tell him to do anything in specific, Mao Mao decides that he'll just work normally over there. And then Aduo goes there and asks who those girls are and Fengmin explains that they are temporary helpers for the big cleaning day, and upon seeing her, Mao Mao notices Aduo isn't very flashy and doesn't even have a good body. Sensual, she just has an androgynous beauty, which makes her seem younger than she really is. And Mao Mao believes that Aduo would suit riding clothes better than a dress and skirt, and as she leaves the place, the servants are enchanted by the concubine's radiant beauty, and Mao Mao begins to remember someone else. And as for Fengmin, she is a chief lady in waiting, and Mao Mao is surprised to see this, as she thought that to be in this position, the lady would have to be a rich girl from an important family, but Mao Mao feels that she is friendly too much for that. And Fengmin asks the girls to put down their books to get some air, and upon entering the room, she notices that it is in fact the oldest concubine's territory because even though the place has an efficient appearance, the mansion is still full of objects. And Mao Mao also analyzes the workers there, and notices that they are as hardworking as the servants in the Jade Palace, unlike those other servants who only know how to laugh at others. And well, she finally finishes the work, and Feng Min congratulates her on her job well done and organized, and then she asks Mao Mao to help her with the salon too. And with that, she notes that Feng Min has good persuasion techniques, and this helps a lot when you are in the role of boss, and at nightfall, Mao Mao feels her body going crazy from so much physical effort she made, and Feng Min thanks her again for the good work she did that day. And then she calls the girl to a room, and gives her a blanket, so she can sleep there, and in the middle of the night she remembers again about Jinshu not having ordered her to do anything in particular, and she feels that it all still has another purpose but she just covers herself and goes to sleep. And the next day, while working, she wonders if the person responsible for the poisoning is really there, and then she notices Fengmin willing to help the servants too, and she feels that if she got married, 
she would certainly be a good wife, however, she notices that Feng Min is past her prime, and with that in mind Mao Mao wonders if she would have chosen to serve concubine A Duo for life. And if this is true, the strength of this loyalty could be a good reason to poison someone, even more so now with the arrival of a new concubine, and the one at greater risk is the concubine A Duo herself, in which Mao Mao wonders what would happen if another vacancy opened. And she remembers that the emperor is only interested in older women, so Li Xu would be out of the question for him, as the emperor no longer visits her, and considering that the girl is 14 years old, Mao Mao understands that it is better than things keep it up. However, this leaves room for people to say that she is not fulfilling her role as a concubine, and Mao Mao theorizes that if someone were to poison someone for concubine a duo, that person would definitely target Li Xu. And well, a servant calls him to help her, and she explains that Lady Feng Min takes care of an apiary, and that's why there is so much honey around, even though they are very expensive, and Mao Mao remembers the sweet-scented candle he saw last night and she understands that that smell was probably made with that honey. And when she looks outside, she sees Dana Li Shu accompanied only by her taster, and then she wonders why she is in the Granada Palace, and she remembers that Li Shu was scared at yesterday's tea party. And well, she returns to Genshur and goes over everything that happened in the Granada Palace, and he asks to know more, but Mao Mao claims that he reported everything, and mentally she says that he asked the wrong person for help if he wanted it, for her to act like a spy. And then Jinshu decides to change the question, and asks her who they would call if any of them could contact someone from outside with a special method, and Mao Mao says that the only probability would be Lady Feng Min the chief lady in waiting. And then he asks what she's basing that guess on, and she explains that Feng Min had bands around his left wrist, and those wooden text plates were in the middle of a woman's dress with a burn on the sleeve. Furthermore, she theorizes that the reason someone would make a fire with different colors would be to hide a code, and although Feng Min doesn't appear to be part of this entire conspiracy, everything indicates that she is involved in it. And upon hearing this answer, Jin Shi says that she passed her test, and she notes that he had probably already investigated this situation, especially because the honey he is eating already gives it away. And then he goes to her and offers himself to give her some of his honey to reward her for her good work, but she refuses, so he takes the honey with his finger and offers to serve it in her mouth. And when she finds herself cornered, she tries to call Gao Shan, but he stays quiet, so as not to get involved with his boss's affairs, and Jin Shi brings the honey to her mouth again, and Mao Mao regrets that he is of a level high, otherwise he would have already been kicked in that place. And she wonders whether she should accept that as an order, or whether she should run away to maintain her dignity. And then Mao Mao says that if that were aconite syrup, she would accept it immediately, and then she returns to having memories of Li Xu, of the girl found drowned and also from the day she worked at the palace in Granada. And then she associates the syrup with the honey, and is paralyzed thinking about it, and Gyokuyu appears there, and sees that whole regrettable scene, and she questions with what permission Jinshu is doing that, so he runs away, and after his boss being reprimanded Gao Shan goes there and asks Mao Mao to forgive his boss for the joke. At this she understands that he would have no problem licking the honey for her, but Gao Shan is uncomfortable just thinking about it, and well, she comments that there are still some things she needs to check in the Granada Palace. And when she gets there, she apologizes to Li Xu for appearing out of nowhere, and says that she needs to ask something, and upon seeing her, the lady remembers Mao Mao at the garden party, and she allows her to ask the question. And then she asks if Li Xu doesn't like honey, and the girl is surprised that she noticed that, but Mao Mao claims that anyone can notice that, and she questions if the lady had ever felt sick to her stomach when eating honey before, as it is common for people who have suffered from food poisoning to not know how to deal with honey so well. But Li Xu says she doesn't like honey for another reason, and she explains that when she was a baby, she almost lost her life after eating honey, and since then the nurses have told her not to eat it anymore. Then one of the servants interrupts the conversation, and says that Mao Mao is being very rude by interrogating Lady Li Xu like that, and she just mentally disdains this servant, after all, it was she who refused to protect Lady Li Xu at the tea party. And then the servants advise Li Xu not to listen to Mao Mao, as she is just being rude by asking these questions, in which she analyzes the girls, and notes that this is their way of deceiving the lady, and making her think that people outside are her enemies, while they claim to be her allies. After all, 
They are older than Li Xu, and they feel that they can deceive her more easily, and well, Mao Mao makes it clear that she is only there to follow orders, so if they want to complain, they should do so with Master Jin Shi, but upon hearing his name, they get emotional and stop bothering him. Then Mao Mao asks if Li Xu was close to Lady Feng Min, and she widens her eyes in fright, and upon leaving the room, she meets Gao Shan, and asks how she could find out about ancient events that took place there. And he says he can try to check the court library to help her, and getting there, he is curious to find out what she discovered this time. So he takes a book for her, and when Mao Mao reads it, she discovers that 17 years ago, when the current emperor was a prince, he had a son with his concubine Aduo, but the child died soon afterwards. And because he was born almost at the same time as the previous emperor's son, he would be the current emperor's younger brother. And in that book it also says that the emperor and concubine Aduo were raised by the same mother, and this explains his attachment to her. And 16 years ago this baby died, and the person responsible for delivering her was Dr. Luo Men, that is, Mao Mao's father, and she says that she was already imagining something like that, because many herbs that grow in the inner palace are the same ones she used when she was little. Therefore, she believes that the person responsible for planting those plants there was her father, a doctor with too high a qualification to be an apothecary of the pleasure district, and in addition, he is also an ancient eunuch who has one of the bones of his knee removed, and she wonders what her father was doing at that time. The next day, Mao Mao goes to Feng Min, to deliver a letter from concubine Gyokuyu to Aduo, in which the lady explains that she is currently at a tea party, and Mao Mao says that he needs to talk to her about something. And then Feng Min invites her in, and she starts to get suspicious when she sees that Ms. Aduo has suddenly packed her things, and Feng Min asks her what the matter is, and Mao Mao asks when her move will be. In this, the lady immediately understands that the girl had already realized that the New Year's cleaning was just a facade, as her real purpose was something else, and then Feng Min reveals that when the New Year arrives, concubine Aduo will leave the pavilion to make room for the new high-ranking concubine. And well, Mao Mao comments that the concubine, Aduo, can no longer have children, so she asks what happened during her birth, and the lady says that this probably won't be relevant for her to know, but Mao Mao states that it won't be a useless information, after all her father attended this birth, and she informs that the date of concubine Aduo's birth coincided with the date of delivery of the former empress. Then a scene from the time appears, where Aifuo was giving birth, and Feng Min asks for the doctor, but one of the ladies-in-waiting informs her that he is still the empress, and then she begins to despair, and asks Aduo to stay. Don't worry, everything will soon be resolved. And Mao Mao deduces that compared to the Empress, Miss Aduo's birth was not that important, and since that day, Mao Mao deduces that she lost her uterus, and for that reason, all children born to Aduo from then on, they always died very young. And she comments that maybe Feng Min feels bad about what happened, after all she was the only one who took care of the baby while the concubine was unwell, and upon hearing all these deductions, she notices that the girl is on top of absolutely everything, and Feng Min calls her father useless, because he was unable to help Lady Aduo. And then Mao Mao tells about a rumor, which talks about the cause of the baby's death being from poisoning, and that poison was spread on face powder, just like they did recently, and the useless doctor she says, would have banned the use of face powder, precisely to prevent more people from being poisoned. And taking these points into account, she understands that a person as intelligent as Feng Min would never let the baby die for something so trivial. And when opening the suitcase that was with her, Mao Mao reveals that there is the real cause of the baby's death. In other words, a flower with poison, and she explains that there are many such flowers, which contain aconite and azalea, in addition, the syrups made with this plant are also poisonous, which, by the way, were the syrups she made for the baby. And while she helped, Aduo felt grateful for her help in taking care of her baby. But shortly afterwards the concubine Aduo's son died, and the cause of his death was unknown until then, and Mao Mao explains that at the time, as his father was the court doctor, and let this happen, he ended up being banished from the back palace but in addition to this error, he was also judged by several others, who made him receive such punishment. And after that, 
Mao Mao states that Feng Min had discovered the real cause of Aduo's son's death as a certain person had told her that honey is poisonous for babies, and so she started to take precautions for concubine, Duo didn't learn about these things, so that she wouldn't find out that she was the one who caused the death of her only son. And for that reason she wanted to get rid of them, and one of those people was the concubine Li Xu, in which Mao Mao explains that during the former emperor's reign, Li Xu was linked with the eldest lady, the concubine Aduo, and then the two they began to create a connection due to the difficulties they both went through in their lives, as Li Xu was a young woman who had left home, whereas she was a woman who could no longer have children. And therefore, Mao Mao deduces that they perhaps had a type of codependency formation, and as for Li Xu, she also almost died after eating honey when she was a child. And to prevent concubine Aduo from knowing this, Feng Min would have started to keep concubine Li Xu away from the Garnet Pavilion. And as time passed, the former emperor ended up dying, and Lady Li Xu entered the temple without knowing why. Having been rejected, and for Mao Mao, this must have certainly made Feng Min relieved, as she believed that she would never see Lady Li Xu again. However, one day she returned to the back pavilion as a high-ranking concubine to replace concubine A Duo's position. However, Li Xu continued to visit her again and again, as if searching for a mother figure, and to protect the position of concubine A Duo who cannot have children, and also to hide the honey incident. Feng Min put poison in concubine Li Xu's soup, and upon hearing all these revelations, the lady questions what Mao Mao wants with all this, and she responds that she doesn't want anything, but Feng Min tries to buy her, saying that he will give her whatever the girl wants, and when faced with this scary look, Mao Mao informs her that these threats are useless. And then Feng Min takes a deep breath, and asks if Mao Mao has ever met the dearest thing about the person she loves, and she remains silent, at which Feng Min explains that since she met Lady A Duo, she knew that she was destined to serve only her and although she was a woman, Aduo maintained her poise and managed to talk on an equal footing with the entire eastern palace, which is why Feng Min claims that he respected her a lot. Because unlike her, Feng Min was a castrated girl, who blindly followed her parents to become a maid, and meeting concubine Aduo changed her life, but what she received in return was the death of her only son, taken by Feng Min's hands. And when she remembers this, she starts to cry, and remembers how a duo loved her son very much, having him as her most precious diamond, but when that happened, a duo said that the lives of children before the age of seven, it really is uncertain, after all, any illness can take your life, and she was only saying that precisely to try to calm down her employees, to prevent them from feeling guilty about her son's death. And Feng Min reports that after hearing this, all her nights were not easy, as she cried every night because of what she had done, and meanwhile, Mao Mao remembers about Feng Min having lived the last 16 years just serving his master tirelessly, even giving up getting married, just to remain by his side. And Mao Mao states that she will never be able to understand this, because she doesn't consider herself a person willing to take care of someone with such dedication, and well, she turns to the main topic, and comments that if she tells the whole truth, Jin Shi will certainly capture her there, and obviously she will be sentenced to death. And she deduces that Feng Min also knows this, and then Mao Mao goes to the lady and explains that the only thing he can do is reduce her two reasons into one, but she still claims that the result will be the same. And after that, Mao Mao returns to her room, and when taking off her coat, she reveals that she was wearing several layers of paper caked with oil underneath her clothes, in case something more serious happened, but she feels relieved for everything have gone well. And the next day, Jin Shi discovers that Feng Min herself has surrendered, and so he asks if Mao Mao knows anything, and she pretends not to understand, in which he explains that Gao Shan went to collect some information for her, and Mao Mao says that he couldn't take advantage of it. And then Jin Shi recaps what happened, and comments that Feng Min's objective was to ensure that concubine A Duo could continue in one of the positions of the four concubines, but her departure from the inner palace had already been decided, and she will live in a separate palace in the south. And then Mao Mao questions whether this incident has anything to do with what is happening now, and Jen Shi says no, as this decision had already been made a long time ago, as it was the emperor's own decision. And well, Mao Mao notices a flower in the room, and Jin Shi explains that it was placed by Hongyang recently, and when touching it, Mao Mao notices that it is not in season for it to bloom, and then she puts the flower in her mouth. Then Jin Shi does the same, 
and says that it is very sweet, but Mao Mao warns him that this flower has poison but nothing that could kill him, and well, she leaves the place, and reveals what her suggestion was to Feng Min that time. time. And then she explains that if concubine Li Xu's poisoning and the baby's cause of death could be reduced to one, Feng Min could hide the baby's cause of death from concubine A Duo. However, her death would still be inevitable. But in the end, Mao Mao understands that this was the most she could do as she is just a simple servant with no power. And at nightfall Jin Shi goes to talk to A Duo, and Mao Mao decides to go for a walk around the palace as he can't sleep with all this going on. And while climbing the palace walls, she sits down to enjoy the night, and reveals that Feng Min's execution has already come to an end, and when the concubine A Duo, she is scheduled to leave the inner palace the next day. And speaking of her, A Duo appears there, and calls Mao Mao to get drunk with her, and she comments to the girl that she looks like a man, and Mao Mao says that she seems to force this strong personality. And then A Duo explains that since her son's death, she has become friends with the emperor again, as before, and she says that she didn't expect to become a concubine, and to this day she believes that she only gained that position out of pity. And that's why she wanted to pass this paper on to someone else as soon as possible, and well, she goes to the edge of the wall, and comments that the girl who died in the river must have felt very cold and in a lot of pain in that water. At this she laments, and states that she and everyone else are a bunch of idiots, and Mao Mao agrees, saying that maybe they really could be idiots, and after this conversation, Mao Mao finally understands that that servant had indeed taken her own life, different from what she thought, and she deduces that Feng Min may have helped set everything up, and so that the concubine A Duo would not be suspected, the servant decided to drown herself in the freezing water, and as for Feng Min, to keep her secret hidden, she willingly decided to go up up to the gallows. And well, she decides to go back to her room, and as she goes down the wall Jin Shi appears there and ends up making her fall to the floor, due to the fright, and when she gets up to leave, he pulls her back, and complains of the cold. Then she notices him upset, and asks if he drank, and Jin Shi replies that he had no choice, after all he was with a company that filled him with drinks and then left. And when she returned, she said she was satisfied and decided to leave, and upon hearing this, she was surprised, because she didn't imagine that there was someone in the inner palace who could treat him like that. And then, Mao Mao tries to let go, but soon she remembers that he saved her from falling off the wall, and so she decides to thank him before letting go, but he starts to cry, and asks her to warm him up just one more time, little. And the next day, A Duo returns her crown, which symbolizes that she is the pure concubine, and Mao Mao informs that this same crown will be given to another girl who will enter the inner palace in the future, and upon seeing Jin Shi and A Duo together, she is finally able to notice the similarity between them. And well, Mao Mao starts to remember his conversation with her, and remembers her saying that her son disappeared in your hands, and Mao Mao states that the correct thing to say would be, he died in my hands. In other words, she said it in a way that suggests that her son is alive, that same son who was born at the same time as the Empress's son, and so she wonders whether the two sons had been exchanged. And Mao Mao explains that the neglect with the concubine A Duo was because she was the daughter of a simple nurse and friend of the prince, and from the beginning she knew that her son would have a better life if he lived as the son of the empress, therefore Mao Mao he deduces that she agreed to leave him as the empress's son, to ensure that he survived. At the time, this exchange would have occurred shortly after the death of one of the children, and this explains why Mao Mao's father was punished for not having noticed this, after all, it was the empress's legitimate son who would have been killed. And Mao Mao believes that if his theory is right, this also explains why the emperor's younger brother is in a delicate position, and also explains why concubine A Duo stays in the inner palace, even though she is a royalist. And well, Li Xu goes there too, to say goodbye, but on the way the girl ends up falling, and then A Duo welcomes the girl, and Mao Mao feels a maternal energy coming from her at that moment. And at the end of that afternoon, Gao Shan goes to Jin Shi to give him the list of Feng Min's family and the people related to them, and upon seeing this, Jin Shi is amazed, as he had heard that Mao Mao had actually been kidnapped and sold. And then Jin Shi asks what they should do, and Gao Shan questions what he intends to do, and Jin Shi explains that after Feng Min's execution, his relatives had their wealth stolen, 
and were also physically punished to varying degrees. And as for the crime, Jean Chu says that only Feng Min committed it, and luckily she wasn't caught before because her master A Duo didn't interrogate her. But now Jean Chu has the names of Feng Min's family and also of her acquaintances who have some connection with her family. And Gao Shun reports that the list also contains the names of the clients who conducted business with the family. And these people would have done a wide variety of businesses other than beekeeping, and in total, it is estimated that around 80 people from the back palace own connections with family. And then Jinsha reminds him that this place is made up of 2,000 people, so finding 80 in this cake won't be easy. He remembers that the party where the apothecary was sold after being kidnapped has a connection with the family. And Gao Shan is willing to investigate this case for Jinsha if he wants, and he notes that anything he says will happen, after all Mao Mao clearly understands the division between commoners and nobility, therefore she will follow any order given to her, as he, Jin He can easily go over any order with ease. And he realizes that if he covers up this case, he can keep her in the back palace, but he wonders if that's really what Mao Mao wants, and he wonders what she would think if she knew she was forced to stay in a place which you don't want. And Jin Chur confesses that he's afraid of making things worse between the two of them because he doesn't know how she would react to that, and then Gao Shun says that he thought Mao Mao was just a convenient chess piece for him. And meanwhile, she talks to her friend, and Xiao Lan comments about such a mass shooting and says that all the daughters of parents who did business with Feng Min's family should give up, and Xiao Lan notices that many of these girls are in panic because they suddenly need to do this, after all that family does business with a lot of people out there. And upon hearing this, Mao Mao already has a bad feeling about this story. In addition, she says that she will be in danger if she is fired now, as the moment for this is very tense, and she explains that after Lehaku's visit she was unable to send any rich clients to Grams, so if she returns now, Mao Mao will certainly be sold to pay off her debt. At this she starts to rush, and says that last time she checked, her family of record was listed as a merchant family, so if Feng Min's family is made up of farmers, she believes they may have some kind of connection. And after walking a little further, she sees Jin Chur from afar and shouts for him, and then he asks why she is breathing heavily, and when she tries to explain what was happening, he asks her to stay calm, because her face it's all red. However, Mao Mao says that she needs to talk to him immediately, so he calls her to talk to his room, and Jin Chur asks if she would be there to talk about the mass shootings, and she says yes, and asks what will happen to her. From now on, and then he gives her the record, and upon reading it, Mao Mao discovers that she will be fired, and Jin Shu notices the expression of sadness in her eyes, and asks what she wants, then he remembers Gao Shan having said that Mao Mao appeared to be just a convenient chess piece. And then she says that since she became Gyokuyu's lady-in-waiting, she can taste the medicines and have access to the doctor's office, and that's why she has been enjoying the life she had there. However she feels that she is still a simple palace servant, so Mao Mao believes she is in no position to ask not to be fired. And then Mao Mao tells Jin Chur that she is just a servant of the palace, and so she will follow what he says, as she will accept his words as an order, just as she has always done since she arrived there. And she guarantees that she can overcome anything, as long as it is an order, in addition, Mao Mao says that she will not complain even if her salary goes down because if she gains some time before being sold she can still survive. And then Jin Chur understands her, and says that he will pay her as much as he can before firing her, and upon hearing this, Mao Mao is down, but goes back to his room, to prepare his things. And meanwhile Jin Chur squats in the corner of the room being helped by Gao Shun, and says that he should have prevented her from being fired, but he just stops to stop. Gao Shun didn't say anything else. And the following week after the dismissal, Mao Mao returned to the Pleasure District, being kind to all the people who took care of her, and as for Jin Chur, he remains down, as he lost a very fun toy for him, which in this case, was the Mao Mao herself, and Gao Shan believes that he will hardly find another girl as interesting as her in the palace. But upon reflecting a little more, Gao Shan notices that perhaps Mao Mao wasn't a toy for Jin Chur, after all he didn't force her to stay there precisely because he didn't want to use her. And then he returns to face Jin Chur, all destroyed, and Gao Shan feels obliged to find another replacement for him, 
and meanwhile the highest ranking courtesans in the pleasure district put makeup on Mao Mao. And she explains that the job that night is to participate in a banquet with the nobility outside the brothel, and Mao Mao states that the money that these nobles will pay to do this certainly exceeds the annual salary of a common man, after all, it's not cheap to call the three princesses of House Verdigris at the same time. And she explains that she will go with the three of them to the banquet, but she will only be there to support them and nothing more, and while they continue producing her, Mao Mao informs her that she managed to earn a lot of money when she left the back palace, and that was why she could avoid being sold. Then the old lady shows up and tells the girls to hurry up as it's almost time, and when she looks at Mao Mao, she comments that the girl is more beautiful than usual, and then the old lady offers to push a client to her immediately, if Mao Mao wants. But she just continues the journey, and notices that this lady really wants to see her become a courtesan, and on the way to the meeting she feels out of place with this reality, after all she doesn't know at all how to entertain nobles, as she is just a daughter of an apothecary, and is only interested in medicine. But still, the lady continues to approach her with this type of offer for a long time, and upon arriving at the meeting place, Mao Mao is not so surprised by the fact that the place is very chic and beautiful, after all they are going out with nobles. And looking more at the environment, she notices several super expensive levels there. So one of the attendants directs them to the dining room, and Mao Mao realizes that the men there are employees of the superior court, and therefore they are well near Lihaku. But still, they are younger than she expected, and upon thinking a little more, she feels that she would have done well to introduce herself to Lihaku sooner, after all if she knows such rich people, she could possibly use him to help herself. Get rid of a large part of your debt to the brothel. And well, the girls start to entertain the nobles, with music and dancing, and in the middle of it all Mao Mao finds herself tired, due to having to smile and be friendly all the time, and then she notices one of the men looking a little haggard. One of the tables, and decides to go there and talk to him. But he asks her to leave him alone, and upon hearing this voice, Mao Mao recognizes Jin Shi, and upon seeing her too, he comments that she appears to be someone else when she has makeup on, and Jin Shi asks why she is dressed that way. And she responds that she is earning money to be there, and upon hearing that the job was in a brothel, he gets all scared. But Mao Mao makes it clear that he doesn't receive personal clients yet, and so he says that he must buy her. And she thinks he's joking at the time, but when she stops to think about it, she understands that this could be an excellent idea, as it won't be so bad to work in the back palace again. And Jin Shi states that he was sure she didn't like it there, but Mao Mao says that she made it clear at all times that she wanted to work there, but he fired her anyway, and she explains that the work was indeed boring, but still she I had the privilege of being a food tester, and that is a role that few can hold. Furthermore, she states that her only complaint was the fact that she didn't have the freedom to experiment with her own poisons, and then Jin Shi laughs, and advises her not to experiment with poison, and he asks if anyone had ever told her that she does not express itself well. And Mao Mao confirms that they keep saying this to her, so Jin Shi touches her again, and he asks her to momentarily forget the rule that the client cannot touch the courtesans, but she refuses, and he continues to insist, as he always has. Then Mao Mao decides to let him touch her lightly, but he touches her lips and then kisses his own fingers, thus managing to steal an indirect kiss from her, and upon seeing this, Mao Mao notices that the color of her lipstick got stuck in his mouth, and then the other courtesans mock her from afar. And then Gao Shan appears there too, leaving the girl even more confused, and after that, Mao Mao reports that he doesn't remember much, the only thing that remained in his mind was the difficult questions that the other courtesans kept asking about the man who was next to him. And the next day, Mao Mao decides to put on her fake freckles again to avoid getting into trouble, and then she remembers her kidnapping that happened in winter last year and says that being kidnapped was surprise enough but being sold together to the inner palace overcame her unpleasant suppressions even further, in addition. She was also promoted to lady-in-waiting even without wanting to draw so much attention. And well, the lady of the courtesans goes to her and says that she needs her to go see someone, and after doing that, she goes to take a shower, and reflects on the inner palace being the place she most wants to avoid, but still, she wonders if the people there are okay. And then the lady joins her in the bath and asks what she will do from now on, and Mao Mao says that he will pay his debts to her, at which the lady feels relieved and asks if she intends to return to the inner palace, 
but Mao Mao says he says he doesn't know yet. And when looking at the sky, she repeats again that the pleasure district and the inner palace are not so different, as one of them is a garden while the other is a cage, and then several memories of things she experienced in the palace begin to take your mind. And after that, Mao Mao wonders what things will be like from now on, but she decides to think about it inside the house, because of how cold it is suddenly. And after a few days, Jean Sher appeared in the pleasure district, accompanied by a suitcase with enough money to make the lady's eyes shine, and for the girl, he gave her an ancient root, but in exchange for all these riches, he asked for have Mao Mao back. And after a few days, Jean Sher appeared in the pleasure district, accompanied by a briefcase with enough money to make the lady's eyes shine, and to the girl, he gave her a strange insect with a large one growing inside it, but in exchange of all these riches, he asked to have Mao Mao back. And upon returning to the palace, he meets with the emperor, and in the midst of conversations, the emperor asks what Jean Sher's decision will be, after all he is taking care of his flower garden now. And then he notices that the emperor is a very shrewd man, unlike him because regardless of how much Jensher tries intellectually and in martial arts, he remains just a little above average in everything. However, his only advantage over others is his beauty, and seeing that everything he wants is out of reach, Jensher decides to conform and accept things as they are, however he plans to use his beauty as a weapon to take advantage. And judging himself from the inside, Jensher feels that he is nothing more than a child walking in the emperor's line, and so he decides to do as his lord wishes, and says that he will manage the inner palace, just to please him, after all this it's the only way he found to be able to choose his own path. And meanwhile at the Verdigris house, Mimi prepares Mao Mao's suitcase, and tells her to bring lipstick too, so that the girl can dress elegantly, but she says that she won't need that, as only courtesans need to look all dressed up, for them to work. And then Mimi states that she got a great job in the inner palace, so she should also dress nice to go to work, otherwise Mao Mao's clients will run away from him at some point. In in this she feels that her words are very convincing, besides Mimi knows very well how to treat a client, because even though she is old enough to retire, she is still popular because of her intelligence and ability to entertain her clients. And well, Perrin and Joka go there to wish him good luck with his work, and Mimi says that she would be very happy if Mao Mao brought some more rich clients from the inner palace, but the other courtesans emphasize that he must be a man with a lot of money. And upon leaving the Verdigris house, Mao Mao comments that he will return to an area of the palace, called the inner palace, a place where women are housed who are waiting to have the emperor's children, and as for her, Mao Mao worked as a servant low level, until he ended up attracting a lot of attention when solving the mystery of a newborn heir about to die, Gyokuyu's lady in waiting, and from then on she ended up getting into countless troubles by becoming a food taster, in which several things happened, leading to her dismissal. However, a short time later, Mao Mao was returning to the inner palace, as she ended up giving in to the temptation of the caterpillar fungus, given by Jensher, and although she sees that job as an extended vacation from the pleasure district, she doesn't feel good about leaving it, your father behind while he works, but at least the rules are very light this time, plus Mao Mao is no longer seen as a missing person by her family, besides her father had told her to do what she thought was best, and upon arriving at her father's house, he comments that she got a lot of things from the courtesans, but she just wants to make sure she takes her pestle, her grind and her notebook. But her father deduces that she won't be able to take these things, after all she is not a doctor, so if Mao Mao takes this, everyone will suspect that she is planning to poison someone, and upon hearing this, she despairs, because in fact, you will not be able to take these items. But her father reminds her that the decision to leave again was hers, and now it is too late for her to give up, so he believes that she can get permission to take these things to the inner palace little by little. But for now he tells her to go to sleep, because tomorrow she will go back to to work, and in the middle of the night, her father regrets her departure, claiming that the house will be lonely once again, but Mao Mao reassures him, and he says that this time she can come and visit him whenever she wants. And then he touches her head, and says that Mao Mao can come back to visit him as soon as he wants, and she remembers that they no longer have a mother, but still, she has a very charitable father, a noisy grandmother and a very lively group of older sisters. And at dawn she goes to Jensher, where he is surprised to see her all dressed
dressed up and the lady of the Verdigris house picks on her, telling the girl not to forget to bring more clients to her brothel. And with this matter resolved, they say goodbye, and in the middle of the trip, Mao Mao says that the fact that she is attracting a lot of attention is Jin Shi's fault, but he tries to say that she is only attracting attention because she is very beautiful, but he ends up telling her the sentence before finishing it. And after walking a little further, Jin Shi reminds Mao Mao that she can wear freckles again while she's there, and already in the inner palace, two men comment that the manager of the inner palace bought a courtesan from the Verdigris house, that famous place that houses the three princess. And meanwhile, Mao Mao finally arrives at her destination, and Jin Shi says that they are at her house, and there will be her new place of work, and upon hearing this she is amazed, and says that she expected to return to the inner palace, in that Gao Shun explains that because she was fired once, it is difficult to employ her in the same job so easily, so she will work in the outer palace from now on. And then a lady introduces herself to her as Swearin, Jin Shi's assistant, and the lady explains that in that place there are two separate buildings, one with the office and the other with the personal residence. And then Swearin takes her to her new room, and when she comes across it, Mao Mao notices that the area there is almost the same size as the room she used in the Jade Palace, however she believes that this room is still very good to be that of a servant. However, Jin Shi calls her to talk, and says that he has no plans to task her with servant work, so he puts some books on the table, and informs her that she will take the court lady exam. And the next morning, she puts on her clothes, which, by the way, were carefully made of cotton, to please her, and when she finds Swearin, she tells her that she went there to help her with her chores, but the lady says she's already finishing, so she would just help her serve the food. And upon seeing the kitchen empty, Mao Mao asks where the other assistants are, and Swearin says that there are none, as she couldn't let anyone else take care of the tasks she is responsible for, especially when it comes to the young master's food. Then Mao Mao asks if she always did all the work alone, and Swearin explains that she already had some girls helping her, but many things happened and they ended up not lasting long. And then Mao Mao deduces that one of them might have put an aphrodisiac in his food, or maybe they might have tried to steal something, but the lady puts an end to his doubts, saying that one of the girls forgot underwear in her closet. Then Mao Mao sympathizes with the situation she went through, saying that it must have been a huge headache, and after preparing the food, she calls Jin Shi to eat, and seeing him exuding eroticism, Mao Mao understands why no girl can enter his room, after all she would certainly throw herself at his feet. And well, Jin Shi tells her that that she can get a new room, if Mao Mao wants, and upon hearing this, she understands that this is her chance to get a fire and a well. But upon seeing her features, Gao Shun looks at her with a serious look, but says nothing, and Mao Mao asks Jin Shi to give him a stable with a well nearby, but Jin Shi refuses. And after that, he is left at home, as he is very busy, although he was always seen wandering around the inner palace, and well, she is taken to the east side of the area, whereupon the girl is amazed at the size of the place, and believes it will be very difficult to remember all the names and departments. Furthermore, she does not have a very good ability to remember waves that she is not interested in, so Gao Shun takes her to the water board, which in this case is the department responsible for taking care of rivers, dams and projects that use water. And analyzing the area further, Mao Mao notices that the inner palace had much more medicinal ingredients, and from this she deduces that her father must have planted all these herbs while working there, and upon seeing her distracted, Gao Shun Holds her. After all, the girl will soon become a court lady, and therefore she should behave like one. And second later she meets the lady again, and then she asks Mao Mao to take the coal to the office, and when she gets there she notices that all the items are discreet and first class, and this makes her wonder how high quality she is. The young master's class. And when she leaves the room, Mao Mao comes across some court ladies watching her with an angry look, and she explains that in the outer palace, the court ladies are similar to secretaries, as they have qualifications, family inquiries, and good education, and this differentiates them from the women who exist in the inner palace, and it is for these reasons that they are much more proud than other common servants. And then they go to Mao Mao, and ask her what she is doing working directly for Master Jin Shi, and because she doesn't know what to say, Mao Mao asks if she is jealous, and the girl slaps him in the face. And when he sees that his first attempt doesn't work, Mao Mao changes his speech and says that Jin Shi certainly doesn't want anything to do with her 
after all he's too pretty to want an ugly girl like her. And upon hearing this, the girls understand her point of view, but one of the ladies asks her why he would have hired her, and then Mao Mao takes out the wounds on his arm, and says that he hired her out of pity, because besides of external beauty, Jean Cher also has an equally beautiful heart. Then the girls retreat, and Jean Cher appears, demonstrating that he heard the entire conversation, but Mao Mao quickly leaves to do cleaning work. And at nightfall, she opens the box with the caterpillar she receives from Jean Cher, and upon seeing her so agitated, Swearin asks the girl to be silent, and the next day, the test to be a court lady is administered, but Mao Mao did not pass. And when leaving the office, she comes across several herbs, which make her very excited, and then one of the court ladies comes to her, and says that the girl has no reason to be walking around there. And when she turns to leave, Mao Mao smells a smell of sandalwood mixed with something in her hair, and after that she decides to follow her path too, and a mysterious man stands from afar watching her steps. And on a snowy day, a noble-looking woman walks into the palace, after entering the gates with her four companions, she simply enters the main house without saying anything. She gives her hair accessories to one of the servants and sits on the chair in the center of the room, acting angry, and with Gyokuyo, she is interacting with one of her ladies-in-waiting. And they are talking about Mao Mao, and the lady doesn't believe that she is back, but Gyokuyo seems to be very excited about it, and is writing a letter for the occasion, saying that now that she is back, this is her chance. And meanwhile, the girl is planting new herbs, because where she is, unlike the inner palace, the outer palace does not have good medicinal herbs, and therefore, she feels that she must continue working hard to get good materials. But while she is busy with this planting, the housekeeper appears behind her, giving her a fright, and asks if she hadn't asked Mao Mao to clean the office, and noticing the hesitation he gave, Mao Mao uses the disappearing jutsu and runs away from there as soon as possible, quickly as possible to fulfill what was asked of you, and she feels that the housekeeper is a tricky opponent, and meanwhile, Jin Shi is with Gao Shan in the office, and they are in doubt, as they have received letters from Lady Li Hua's pavilion, and from Gyokuyo, and while they are at it, Mao Mao arrives knocking on the door, and after entering, Jin Shi asks if she knows the new pure concubine who took over the garnet pavilion in Aduo's place, and as the inner pavilion needs to educate this new concubine, they want Mao Mao to be her instructor, but she doesn't even take this hypothesis seriously seriously and asks if Jin Shir is joking, but he doesn't understand why she thinks that. And he even shows the name of the person who recommended Mao Mao, and when she sees Gyokuyo's name, she takes a step back, and when she sees that the other name that would have recommended her is Li Hua's name, she is in complete trouble. And she tries to understand why she was nominated, but when she remembers the advice she gave to the lady on how to please the emperor, she understands why, and with this bitter end, she is in charge of this complicated task. And upon seeing that she was nominated, dominated by two concubines, she feels that she cannot run away from this, but seeing how much she will receive for this task, she feels that the old lady from the Vertigris house will smile when she sees this. However, Jean Shir appears and sees how much she wanted to charge for her services, and still finds it too little, but when she was about to change the price, the housekeeper arrives, and doesn't let Mao Mao carry out the scam. And then Jean Shir looks at the carriage she was taking, and asks what's inside, but Mao Mao turns into an animal and thinks she she can't let him see her precious teaching material that's in her luggage. And with that he understands the message, and Gao Shan even tries to help her carry the luggage, but she says that there is no need, and thinks that if she needs to do this, she will go with everything. And in the inner palace, Mao Mao feels that it has been time who was there, and notices that that feminine atmosphere calms her. And on the way, many of the women there are in an uproar for Jin Shir, and he says that they are like that because they heard about the classes, but he turns to them and says that these classes will be for high-ranking concubines, and if they are not one, they can take a few steps back. And then they melt even with that, leaving Mao Mao surprised by the power of the eunuch in front of him, and then they enter the house, but Mao Mao puts him out, as he himself said that the classes are only for concubines. And she says that what will be said inside is a highly confidential secret of secret arts only for women, Kadia Damaseno from the Chinese Empire, and after putting them out, she sees the concubines gathered, and notices that each of them is still as well as last time, and the Li Shu is still cornered in the presence of the other three, and finally, 
Finally, she notices Aduo's successor, the concubine Lulan, and Mao Mao points out that she appears to prefer this flashy southern style of clothing, also detailing her facial features, and she comes to the conclusion that based on her age, the emperor will probably give preference to visiting her at night, and she feels that even if the balance of the inner palace is maintained for now, it will only be for now, but she doesn't seem to care enough about it to worry, and then she introduces herself as the instructor of the day, and says that what she teaches there today must only be used in the internal garden and is extremely confidential, and with that, she distributes the teaching materials to them and starts teaching the women, and as they learn, they all show all kinds of reactions, from shyness, interest, and even fainting on Li Xu's part, apparently it was too much for the poor thing, and Lulan, in turn, didn't seem to care much about what was being said there, and meanwhile, outside, Jin Shi had his ear glued to the door, trying to hear whatever was being said inside, however, Mao Mao opens the door and catches him awkwardly and catches him, immediately discovering what he was doing, and then he enters the place, and sees each of their reactions again, and even Li Xu banging her head on the wall and saying that I couldn't do that, and Mao Mao notices that the two recommenders were satisfied with the content, Li Xu was screwing and Lao Lan, she still can't say what that woman is thinking, and so, she leaves the place without saying anything, and Jin Shi tries to ask Mao Mao what kind of lesson she gave, but the girl tells him to try to see about it with the emperor later, and meanwhile, in the Garnet Palace, Lao Lan is cosplaying as a generic villain looking at nothing by candlelight, and Mao Mao is still awake in her bed, but even tired, she still can't hide her excitement about her payment, and in the middle of the night, she hears an explosion in the middle of the palace and men running to the place, and she even thinks about going to see what it's all about, but when she thinks about the housekeeper picking on her, she shivers and thinks it's better to let it go, and at the sight of the explosion, Lachan was investigating the place and even though he managed to get something tracked, he keeps it to himself, and the next day, Mao Mao is wondering what happened in the morning and meanwhile, Jin Shi doesn't seem happy at all, and she notices that even though he's a eunuch, he works a lot in the outer palace, and when she continues her chores, she starts to collect the paper, thinking that selling it would be the best end for it, and seeing that she was going out, Gao Shan gives her a coat, and she notices that he is still as attentive as ever, and thinks it's a shame that he is a eunuch, but Jin Shi is jealous of this and he starts saying it was Jin Shi Wo ordered him to do this, wanting to give credit for the action to his boss, but Mao Mao gets everything wrong, thinking that he can't even give a coat to a maid without his boss's permission, and in that, she thanks Jin Shi instead, and then she comments that easy to find herbs can be seen anywhere, but when looking for them in winter she notices that finding them becomes more difficult, and then Mao Mao wonders if that place would be suitable for sowing them, when she finds some flowers, and when picking up a bulb Mao Mao explains that it can be digested, unless the poison is removed, and when looking to the side, she notices Rihaku, but with a different belt than before, and when he goes to talk to Mao Mao, he appears to not know about her dismissal, and then she explains that he is one of the three lords of Nak Changwan, and as for sister Bai Ling, Mao Mao states that many commoners work for half a year just to find her, so she decides to update him on her life, and explains that she is no longer working for the concubine, in which case, now she is working as a personal maid for a certain person, and when looking to the side, Rihaka notices that there is a lot of work to be done, and he explains that this season there is usually a small unexplained fire, but he guarantees that he is investigating the cause, and upon hearing this, Mao Mao wonders if this incident has anything to do with last night's commotion, and Rihaku explains that this fire is not a real threat to his life, then she approaches the place, and he tells her not to get too close to the warehouse, and then she analyzes that the black coal has spread to the building next door, Door. In addition, construction debris is lying everywhere. Nisi believes that Rihaku's suspicion is that the fire was set for criminal purposes, and not due to human error, and with that Mao Mao understands why he is investigating that incident. And she notes that if there were a fire in any warehouse, it would be inside the emperor's palace, which in this case is a generally peaceful country, but with all the events that are taking place, everyone is dissatisfied, and that's why the place suffers from attacks of immigrants sometimes. And upon seeing a burnt potato on the ground, Mao Mao discovers that the place was a food warehouse, and upon analyzing the place further she finds a pipe made of ivory. Then Rihaku catches up with her, and after making a brief analysis of the place and the things she found there, she runs to another warehouse, and then Mao Mao asks if he keeps the same items from the burned warehouse in that warehouse, and he says yes, so the girl takes an item from under the table and asks Rihaku to get it, a hammer and a saw, as she will try to do some experiments with this equipment. 
equipment. And after that, she sets up a box and pours the flour she got from the store into it, and then she covers the box, leaving a small square for the sample. Then the other eunuch appears with the spark she had asked for, and then she explains that they must keep their distance from the box, as the experiment she is going to do is very dangerous. However, he boasts about being a military officer and decides to stay nearby, whereupon the box explodes in his face, and Mao Mao saves him by throwing a bucket of water at him. And after that, she explains that the explosion incident was made with flour, and the spark that caused the explosion would be the pipe she found in the warehouse. And Mao Mao suggests that someone entered the warehouse to smoke in secret, and when closing the place, the fire would have come into contact with the dust in the air, causing the explosion. So she suggests that he no longer smoke in the store, and Mao Mao reports that he has already done something similar, which made the old lady from the Vertigris house become angry with her. And the girl states that most of these cases of explosions and fires occur with lay people, and as for the officer's cold, Mao Mao tells him to go and get treatment with a pharmacist called Luo Men, in case his condition worsens. And having resolved the matter, she returns to her work, and at nightfall, she takes the pipe she brought from the store, and deduces that if she deals with the item she can sell it for a good price. But soon after, she notices that that item appears to be from the warehouse manager, due to its luxurious details, so Mao Mao decides to just clean it and return it to the warehouse, and meanwhile a eunuch gets angry about something, and says that can handle this situation too. And meanwhile, the eunuchs the comment on the fire incident, and one of them says he is surprised that Rihaku solved the problem, and he informs that there are rumors that the maid helps them solve some cases, in addition he reports that Jinshir visited Nakchangwan recently. Then the man who was observing Mao Mao becomes interested in the subject, and asks the eunuch to tell this story in more detail. And meanwhile Gao Shan goes to Mao Mao to talk to her, in which he gives her some data from an old case about a family of traders, and upon re Reading the document she realizes that someone ate puffer fish salad and ended up getting food poisoning. However, Mao Mao is enchanted by this, and says she likes the thrilling sensation of numbness that the poison gives her, so Gao Shan says he can take her to a restaurant so she can eat this fish. And returning to the main topic, he says that he had already informed her about this incident a while ago, and Gao Shan explains that he was involved in some business, and recently an incident similar to that of the traders, occurred after a former colleague asked him for advice. In this case, a bureaucrat who ate a pufferfish seasoned with vinegar ended up falling into a coma, so Mao Mao is interested in hearing more about this story, and so he says he can tell her, as he trusts that Mao Mao won't tell anyone anything. However, he asks if he can give up telling him the story halfway, and Mao Mao asks Gao Shan to finish the story if he starts telling it. In this he explains that the second seasoning put on the puffer fish was boiled puffer fish skin and meat, and upon eating this the bureaucrat fell into a coma soon after, whereupon Mao Mao asks if he would like to buy a puffer fish, and informs him that the most poisonous it's the one the bureaucrat had the misfortune to eat. And Mao Mao explains that depending on the type and environment, sometimes puffer fish meat can be poisonous, so Gao Shan associates this incident with the last one, in this case that of the merchant family. And he claims that the chef who prepared the food didn't use puffer fish, however the two people fell when eating such food, and Gao Shan comments that he loved loves eating raw fish, and pufferfish was on his list of favorite fish. But after the incident that occurred in the kitchen trash, he found puffer fish intestines and shell, but the poisoning victim stated that he did not eat the fish liver, in this Gao Shan confirmed with the two chefs that they used the puffer fish in the previous day's dish. On the day the incident occurred, both reported that they used another fish, so they claimed to be innocent of what happened to the victims, however no witnesses appeared to defend them. And in addition, the employee who ate all the dishes passed out half an hour after the meal, having said that Mao Mao comments that he was more involved in this incident than she herself was, and in her opinion, everything suggests that these two victims were indeed poisoned with the puffer fish. But in order not to make hasty decisions, Mao Mao asks Gao Shan to bring him more information, so he leaves the room, and Mao Mao comments that at this time of year it would be okay to leave the leftover food for a few days. And as for the report that other fish were used, she believes that this 
statement is coherent, and in the midst of her thoughts Jean Sher appears there to disturb her. And when she sees him she is very scared, he regrets this, and says that it hurts him to marry her, and well, as they go to another room, he comments that he became aware that Mao Mao was helping Gao Shan in a poisoning incident. And she explains that people tend to like interesting stories, and in her case it would be no different, so Mao Mao decides to talk less and leaves Jin Sher talking alone. After that, she meets with Gao Shan and he gives her the recipe used by the chefs, and informs her that it was recreated according to the testimony of a servant, so it contains all the dishes prepared by the chefs. There she finds the pufferfish recipe, and says that apparently there is nothing unusual with the preparation method that the recipe teaches, however Gao Shan says that the second mixing method is described in many different ways, however this materials do not have so many details. And Mao Mao deduces that this occurs because fish and vegetables are not available at certain times, and this means the recipe needs some modifications. And in the middle of the conversation Jin Sher appears there, and upon hearing her say that she doesn't know something, he asks what exactly Mao Mao doesn't know, but she just calls him childish and asks Gao Shan the date the incident occurred, and he says it was about a week ago. There she comments that the ingredients used for winter vegetables would be radishes or carrots, and Gao Shan says that they also use seaweed, and upon hearing this she remembers that he had said that he likes different foods. So she asks him to find her a kitchen, and then Mao Mao is taken to a eunuch called Basin, and while they are in the mansion, Basin says he will take her to the kitchen as soon as they arrive. And then she notices that Gao Shan really always acts very quickly, and upon analyzing the situation further, Mao Mao notices that this is the first time she has seen a military officer, but she feels that he doesn't look at her in such a kind way, but in any case. For Mao Mao says he doesn't care about that. And well, when they get there, Basin takes her to the kitchen as agreed, and he informs her that after the poisoning incident, the place was never used again. Then a man invades the kitchen very aggressively, and tells them to leave, but Basin informs him that they have authorization to enter, and says that they are there for work, and then the man ends up giving in and allowing him to use the kitchen. Then Mao Mao asks who this guy is, and the cook says that he is the owner's younger brother, and he informs that his brother owns the mansion, so he went there to take control of the place. And returning to the main topic, Mao Mao explains to Basin that the kitchen tools and dishes were washed, and when checking one of the food containers, she finds a suspicious ingredient, but the cook explains that the owner ate this often, so know it's something poisonous. And meanwhile, the owner's brother continues to look angry and tells them to get out of there as soon as they finish what they need to do. And after hearing this they leave the place, and Basin asks why she retreated so easily, and Mao Mao shows that she collected some of the mysterious ingredient, and she explains that the harvest season for this seaweed is still far away. And that's why the seaweed is salty and cannot be kept, and Mao Mao comments that it would be of great help if Basin knew where exactly these seaweeds were purchased. And upon returning to the eunuchs, she presents the mansion's seaweed to them, and Mao Mao divided them into two bowls and washed them in advance, and after analyzing the seaweed basin proves that they were purchased in the south just as they already suspected. And when asking the servant, Basin discovered that the owner harvested the seaweed in the middle of winter, and Gao Shan comments that these seaweeds are the same ones Jin Sher usually uses too, so he believes they are not poisonous. But Mao Mao explains that they can be poisonous even if they are the same algae, as the people of the south may have to prepare the algae in a different way than they do. And she believes that a local merchant, to make money, must have purposely harvested the seaweed from the source, even if it was salty, and she explains that even though the seaweed is not toxic, there is a way to make it poisonous. In this Mao Mao explains that the eel is originally toxic, but if its blood is removed or heated, humans can feed on it without any problems, and in the case of this alga, it needs to be thrown into lime water to remove its toxins. And in her case, Mao Mao prepared preserved water with lemon to remove the poison, and then she eats the seaweed, which Jin Sher gets worried and tells her to spit out the seaweed, and she says that by pickling the item it would make him edible, so Mao Mao was just testing whether it actually worked. And well, when returning to the main topic of the meeting, she comments that the problem lies with the person who suggested bringing salted seaweed to a merchant, and she deduces that in regions where people have poor eating habits, this seaweed must be an imported material, therefore it is natural that the risk of consuming it is high. And when explaining this Mayoma believes that she doesn't need to say anything more, as everyone certainly understood her and already knows how this case ends. And after that, Gao Shan says that the culprit for this was his younger brother, the fallen officer, because when a buyer was found, he confessed that he 
bought the item from him, and his brother would have done it out of anger at being treated with neglect, and for him the older brother was practically an obstacle in his path that should be removed, and upon returning to her duties, Mao Mao regrets not having been able to eat the poisonous algae, which is why she gets excited and wonders what to do with the remaining algae, and then she ends up bumping into Jin Shi. so they go to his office, and he explains that he has a lot of work accumulated, and he can't understand anything about the work because he has a partner who differs from his opinions. And Mao Mao confirms that he indeed has a strange partner, but Jin Shi says that his opponent is a very intelligent military official, however he is already 40 years old and has not married, as his only interest is in Baduk, Jangi, and rumors. And while he laments, Mao Mao just asks them to forget about these conflicts, besides, she has no interest in remembering or worrying about these trivial matters. And when leaving the place, Mao Mao feels that she should not ignore Jinji's story, as she has a bad feeling about this situation, and in the meantime Rockin goes to Jin Shi's room, and comments that it is difficult to see flowers in winter, so he had to go to that area. And when you think a little more, the sir remembers that when visiting Nak Changwan in the past, he met someone, to which Jin Shi asks what kind of courtesan she was, and Rockin just says that she was a good person. And he comments that Baduk and Jangi have always been their specialties, but when he saw her defeating a soldier, he says he was impressed, as she demonstrated that she had great skills too. And upon realizing that he would not meet her again, Rockin states that things are not happening according to his wishes, and so he needed to increase the price of that courtesan in a competition with another rich man. At this Jin Shi remembers that the price to buy a courtesan is often enough to build a palace, and Rockin says that she really is a very special courtesan, as she does not treat him as a simple client, but even when she served him tea gently, Rockin reports that he used to look at her arrogantly. And in order not to lose her, he claims that he resorted to very dirty methods, so if he couldn't pay for her because she was expensive, all Rockin needed to do was lower the price of the girl. And before revealing his dirty method, he says he has a favor to ask Jin Shi, so he asks what it would be, and Rockin informs him that he found out about his maid having been to this place recently and solving a strange riddle. And then he informs that among his acquaintances, there is a person who donates goods to the royal court, but this person recently passed away, and he says that the deceased was his disciple, and ended up dying of frustration when he was unable to transmit the secret techniques that I was learning. And for Rockin, this disciple of his must have left a clue behind, so he says he would like to know more about what happened, and he suggests that Jin Shi's intelligent maid can help him in this regard. And as for Mao Mao, she was outside, when suddenly it started to rain very heavily. And after that, Mayame goes to Jin Shi and comments that he always gives him boring work without permission, and then he explains that the situation is now a delicate matter involving a friend of a friend. In this case, the court's goldsmith supplier died without teaching his techniques to his children and apprentices, and with this Mao Mao deduces that his mission is to discover the secret technique of listening, but upon hearing her speaking like that, Jin Shi informs her that this is not the case. It will be an easy task. And then he explains that the deceased left three sons, who were all his apprentices, and one of them will be the new supplier to replace his father's place, and in Heer's will, he had written the way in which his possessions should be distributed. In this case, the first child will receive the attached studio, the second will receive furniture with goldsmith decorations, and finally, the third child will receive an aquarium with goldfish. And the boy's father's last words suggested that the children have tea together just like in the old days, and upon hearing this, Mao Mao starts to pull some strings in her mind, and she states that her father's last words should be taken into account, consideration to solve this new problem. But still, Jin Shi says that his children still don't know much about their father's techniques, and Mao Mao comments that there is an apparent imbalance in how the possessions were divided, as the youngest son took the most banal inheritance. And then she asks what kind of goldfish the boy received, and Jin Shi says he didn't hear any details about it, however he remembers that his friend showed him an address for him to to follow if he wanted to know more about the case. And upon discovering this, Mao Mao notices that the man was already prepared and aware of what would happen, and so she suggests going to visit them the next day, and when the day arrives, she passes through Basin, and like last time, he says that Mao Mao will be his personal servant, so she must move or do anything only when he tells her to. And although she notices that he doesn't like her much, Mao Mao says she is satisfied with the fact that he doesn't do anything to her, and as they continue further, they arrive at the 
the house of one of Uvire's children and right at entrance she notices a strange object in a hole in the wall. And upon seeing her looking so closely at it, the son comments that this object belonged to his father, as he had a hobby of collecting strange things, and moving further into the house, they arrive at the studio, a place intended for tea parties, workers, and entering there, they come across the other brothers, and analyzing the place, Mao Mao notices that the furniture placed in the center of the studio makes everything look irritating, however the place still gives a good impression, and she deduces that it is due to the fact that the tables are set in a uniform manner. In addition, the decoration of the cabinet also helps to maintain an attractive appearance in the room. And then Mao Mao notices that there are keyholes in the first three rows of the furniture and in the bottom center shelf as well, and in the case of this shelf, it is decorated with a different type of metal, and then she notices that this shelf is fixed to the floor to don't move. Then one of the brothers goes to her and tells the girl to just look at the shelves, after all they are her belongings, and upon hearing this she deduces that the other brother is the oldest, and when looking at the window, Mao Mao realizes that she too is positioned in a suspicious way, because that was made for let in a lot of sunlight, but the huge chestnut tree outside blocks the sun, causing the light that enters the house to be filtered by the tree, so the girl notices that there is a mark on the stage in front of her, as if something had been placed there a long time ago, and while waiting for the riddle to be solved, the older brother asks if Mao Mao would really be able to solve his problem, and then Basin says that they can't be sure unless the son tells them more details. And then the son explains that he has already told everything he knew, and says that the only thing that was left for him was that shed, and in the case of the other brothers, they received a cabinet and a glass bowl. And upon seeing her, Mao Mao notices that that aquarium is made with glass that is more resistant than she imagined, after all, she thought that the goldfish aquarium would be made of wood or porcelain, and in this case, all those goods have their own value. And while the girl thinks about these details, one of the brothers expresses that he doesn't understand their father, after all he only left them these strange objects and a key that doesn't fit any lock on the shelves. And then he explains that all the other shelves open with a specific key, except for the central shelf, because so far he hasn't been able to find the key that opens it either. And with that he states that it doesn't make any sense to receive a gift that he can't even open, and then the other brother says that this applies to him too, after all he received a shed, but he can't move the cabinet that is in his house. Path. And finally, the youngest son makes a deduction as to what their father's will would be, but before he can say it, the other brothers interrupt him, and one of them states that there is no sense in their father wanting to unite them in a tea. And when faced with that enigmatic situation, Mao Mao doesn't know what to do, as the relationship between his brothers is no longer the best, and then their mother appears there, and tells the three brothers to stop fighting in front of their parents. Guests. She apologizes to Basin and Mao Mao, and explains that for some reason, the two older children have become cynical and bitter, while the youngest still doesn't have the autonomy to speak for himself. And then the lady asks the guests to have tea with them too, and when analyzing the three brothers further, Mao Mao notices that they all changed their position to sit, and she deduces that this is because they already have seats assigned to each other, each one. And analyzing the sunlight that entered the room, she realized that if the light extended and entered the studio even further, it could reach the cabinet, and because of this, the cabinet did not suffer damage caused by the sun. And with that in mind, Mao Mao gets up and notices that the sun hasn't reached that stage in front of the window for a long time, and when she looks at the lock on the central shelf again, she realizes that there's something inside there. And when he sees her paying so much attention to that shelf all of a sudden, Basin asks if she discovered something, and then she recaps the situation, and says that the middle shelf doesn't open with her son's key. The son explains that a few years ago the key used to open the shelf, but as you listened he added decorations to the furniture, which meant that the key no longer worked. And he explains that if the lock is broken by force, everything inside the shelf will also break, so he cannot try to open it like that. Having said that, Mao Mao remembers again the objects that were passed on to the three brothers, in this case it would be the shed, the cabinet, and the goldfish aquarium. And analyzing all the problems with these items, we have a cabinet locked in the position for the shed, which means that they cannot access it, other than that, we have the lock that does not open the cabinet, and finally, she remembers the Uvire's last words, where he 
asks his three children to have tea together. And when connecting the dots, she looks at the aquarium and deduces that it could be a decoration on the shelf. And when placing the item in front of the sun, the boy explains that they never left the aquarium there because if it got cold, it could die. And since then, they have never had any more goldfish and the aquarium only served as part of the furniture's decoration. Having said that, Mau Mau goes to get some water and when he pours it into the aquarium, his son moves it in a way that leaves the fish drawing against the sun's rays. And as he does so, a uniform ray goes towards the lock, and after it disperses, Mau Mau asks the middle son to use his key again to try to open the shelf, and even though he is skeptical that anything will work, the son obeys to her, and then the key finally opens the shelf. Then Mau Mau asks if their father used to have anemia and stomach pains, and the boy says yes, and besides that he also had nausea and depression, and then Mau Mau makes it clear that he doesn't know much about goldsmithing, and to help her, she asks if her youngest son also uses welding in the studio, and he says yes. And when faced with all this information, Basin asks what this means, and she explains that she just followed their father's wishes, in this case, she made them have tea together, just like they did in the past. And when taking the item from the shelf, she notices that it is a mold for making keys, and the key placed on the box was still hot, therefore, Mau Mau deduces that the heat from the sun must have melted the metal trapped inside the box. Keyhole, and with that the key was made instantly, and when using this new key on another shelf, she manages to open it too, and inside Mau Mau finds another one of those crystals that she had already seen at the entrance to the house. And then the youngest son takes that material and starts to observe it, and Mau Mau remembers a phrase that said that skill should be acquired through observation, and she explains that she heard that phrase several times from a craftsman client. And when she sees the boy observing the object, she notices that only he understood his late father's message, unlike the other brothers who are just complaining about the whole situation. And then she looks at the situation again, and says that solder melts at a lower temperature than its parent metals when mixed with various types of metal. And she notices that of the three pieces of metal, there are two of lead and brown, so she understands that if they add a third variation of metal, they can create something entirely new. And when analyzing the size proportions of the shelves, she deduces that this could indicate the mixing ratio of these metals, and while she tries to solve the riddle, the older brothers leave the place disappointed with their father. But before they left, the youngest son explains to his brothers that their father's will was to make them vote to stay close, and that's why he left this message. And taking his theory into consideration, the boy asks to go back to work with them both, but they say they can't accept that, after all, their youngest son is much more talented than them, and they both claim that it was for this reason that their father trusted the boy much more. However, he tells his brothers that Aviars also trusted them both, after all their father always praised his brothers to him. In the case of brother Chan he was described by Aviars as a calm and very precise boy with detailed work. As for brother Tsu, he is described as a good capturer of people's hearts, and the boy states that being able to become friends with anyone is a skill that Tsu should be proud of. Having said all this, Mao Mao and Basin decide to return to the palace, but first she informs the youngest son about his father being a very good doctor, and she suggests that the boy make consultations with him if he becomes ill. And meanwhile, Jin Chur's friend thanks him for his help in solving the problem of the three brothers, and he informs that the most capable of all was the youngest brother, and after solving the case, he would have become even more skilled. And you deduce that this boy Zay will become the successor and create a metallurgical factory for the court, while the other older brothers will both no longer work as artisans after this incident. The oldest will manage sales, while the middle brother will be responsible for selling the products, so they will continue to support the company, but in different ways. And going back to talking about the boy's father, the man comments that he made a simple metal accessory, however this item was used as decoration for ritual goods, and upon hearing this, Jinshur notes that ritual goods are completely outside his competence. And the Lord General explains that he would think it a huge waste to neglect a hidden talent like that, and although Jinshur thinks the General is a despicable guy, he recognizes that the Lord is good at finding talent in people. And with that he shows interest in hearing more about the story of the courtesan that Lachan had previously commented on, in which you remember saying that you can reduce the scarcity value of a courtesan. However, Lachan suggests that he ask this to a person who understands this world more than he does. With that said he says goodbye, and then Jinshur calls Mau Mau to help him scheme, and upon hearing this, she is left without understanding anything.
After being asked if she has skills as a makeup artist, Jinshi sends for Mao Mao and when she arrives he asks if she understands makeup well and when the girl says yes he asks her to do his makeup with a makeup artist Jinshi asks Mao Mao to do his makeup and this leaves the girl completely in shock but she thinks to herself that this is useless and begin to remember that in the history of the world many nations fell because of women and became someone as beautiful as a celestial maiden if she put on makeup this could end badly and so she asks asks if he wants to end a nation but he doesn't even understand the girl's sarcasm so he returns to the subject asking how she creates her face powder and in that she understands that this time he wants to become ugly so she says that she adds some clay and mixes it with oil to make the foundation that she puts on his face and he immediately becomes interested asking if she could do more of that in a short time and she says that would just need of one night and then she starts to spread it on his skin noticing that for Jean Shur's skin tone it would be a little too dark and so he thinks that it would be good if there was a medicine that would change his face and Mao Mao says that if he wants to look with a commoner she can probably do that for him and in this he accepts her help and asks for complete training and already in her room she is thinking about what plan he would have but how did she accept this service she says she will go with everything but when she arrives in the morning she sees Jin Shi receiving the best of treatments for his hair something that goes completely against today's work proposal and she even confirms with him if he still still plans to go ahead with the plan and when he confirms she smells his skin and says that he obviously smells like very expensive incense and she states that a commoner would never come close to one of these and she also talks about his clothes which are the normal clothes of low ranking officers. That being said, she begins to describe the smell of all the products used in the perfume that Jean Shur is in using and upon hearing this he notes that she in fact knows him well so Mao Mao states that to distinguish medicinal herbs from poison plants, she has developed a much better sense of smell than other common people. She asks if Jin Shi would know how to differentiate the level of his guests by smell and Mao Mao explains that a bad smell indicates a guest with a higher probability of causing headaches, a person with a sour smell who doesn't usually take a shower and has unhygienic habits, and she comments that people who have recently arrived at the Casa Verdetna, most of the time they are expelled as soon as they enter Jean remembers the advice of his friend who told him to ask specific questions to people who know the world of courtesans so Mao Mao asks Gao Chun to bring other clothes for us and preferably filthy clothes and to make matters even worse. She takes a sticky substance and says that she will apply it to his hair to remove the shine and worsen its texture and in doing so she ties his hair to fix the product in it Gao Chun appears with the thinnest clothes mot and stinky ones she found but she still thinks they could be worse in that she asks us to take off his clothes and when she sees him without a shirt she knows notices that he actually looks like a celestial maiden however he still has well-defined and proportionate muscles in that she finds a way to make him look much worse physically with that choppy belly. Then she realizes that he looks very different when he's not well taken care of but she says that she still needs to make his face look ugly and he informs her that he created some facial powders with dark colors and will use it to give a more burned appearance to his skin everything so that he looks even more like the commoner while using his skin she decides to test some feminine makeup up on him to see how it will look. Then she puts lipstick on the guy and when he opens he doesn't understand anything and asks what's going on. But Mao Mao simply takes off his lipstick quickly, thanking the heavens that only the three of them saw that and after that she decides to go back to the procedure she was thinking about doing from the beginning. And when Mao Mao takes his hand, she notices that even though Jin Shi is very important, he has blisters on his hand, so she deduces that these injuries occur because he holds swords for a long time in fights and to make him even worse. Mao Mao serves him a drink with horrible smell and asks him to drink from it Mao Mao explains that it is a stimulant although it is spicy it is not poisonous and to drink the drink she gives him some cotton balls and tells us to put them on his cheek so that he can change the shape of his face and after that he is finally ready but Mao Mao still notices that he is still very handsome but she says that she did her best to make him as bad as possible then she comments to Gao Chun that soon she will be able to visit her family again so Gao Chun Chun informs that Jin Shi will go with her because if he is in disguise it would be strange for him to be accompanied by his usual servants and upon hearing this idea we immediately agree. Mao Mao explains that if she accompanied him it would be suspicious. After all, everyone knows her as a maid. Maid of people. However Gao Chun states that this is not true but the lady next door suggests that Mao Mao disguise herself too if that is the problem.
problem and she states that if the girl changed her usual appearance a little she would no longer be recognized and done. They continue their journey together and Jinsher asks the girl not to call him by his name during this period because otherwise he would be discovered, so he asks her to call him Jinka. After all, that is the name that goes well with the way they are dressed. In this Mao Mao remembers that the, the clothes she is wearing are those of Suiren's daughter and based on her clothes she believes that she could be mistaken for a rich girl. Moving forward, she notes that adding the name Hannah to the Jinka was a somewhat unusual choice and, taking this into consideration, she believes it would have been better to have dressed him as a woman, but she believes that doing so would end the peace of the world. So it's better to leave that idea aside while Bazin stays from afar. So he wonders why he should be their guard and says that it also doesn't make sense to watch them from afar while they two go to a cafeteria Mao Mao teaches Jinka to behave more like a servant and tells him to always walk behind her and when passing through a fair Mao Mao has the idea of asking them to make a chicken stew but Jinka makes him give up on the idea and with that the two keep going on. Ahead and Mao Mao comments that he was thinking of taking some vegetables to the old man and she claims that her father is by far the most talented mortgage doctor in the area but for some reason he has no idea how to calculate his profits and losses and because of this, even though his profession is very lucrative, he lives in a dilapidated hut and she believes that if he ends up going bankrupt, grandma will at least put food in his mouth but in the middle of all this thinking, Jean Sher goes to her angry and asks or why she is so. Silent and Mao Mao explains that he simply has nothing important to say about this, she smells chicken skewers and decides to buy them, so he hands Jinsher a skewer and when he sees that he is not eating, she reassures him that the skewer is not poisoned after all. She he's eating right in front of him but he says it's not because of that but because of the cotton balls that were in his mouth and after removing the cotton balls he goes there and eats the skewer and he says that the skewer is better than the one at the camp and hearing this is a strange Mao Mao well, no. No. She knew that eunuchs also did work that soldiers do but she notices that he is enjoying a speedo and that is the most important thing and as for Gao Chun he goes back to the swear and lady so she asks him how his escort mission was and Gao Chun comments that her master was in a great mood about this she says that he had a great idea in making Jin Shi accompany Mao Mao after all after he found this girl he liked so much he would only feel satisfied if he was with her so swear and compares Mao Mao with the toy his favorite and states that if they hid it from Jinshir he would get upset a lot, consequently no one would be able to deal with him. So she reminds Gao Chun that he tried to calm him down many times by bringing toys to Jinshir but nothing worked and when he returned to the two he tells Mao Mao that she doesn't need to be in such a hurry but she explains that he needs to get to his destination quickly after all he is going to meet someone but Jinshir believes that she is actually wanting to get rid of him as quickly as possible in her mind Mao Mao. She says that she is actually thinking thinking of going back to the market soon and buying those radishes and chicken after leaving it there, Jinshir tells her that Mao Mao's life at court is much better than life in the Prazer district, and she says that that actually living at court isn't that bad, but she says she's worried about her adoptive father and the way he's living and when I hear her say this, people are surprised to discover that Mao Mao cares about something other than medicine and poison, so she explains that her father is her mentor in medicine therefore she needs to ensure that he lives a long life and she informs him that in addition to being an excellent connoisseur of Chinese medicine he is also very skilled in western medicinal practices as he used to study abroad so people notice that her father is in fact very skilled after all. He could only study abroad if he was selected by the country itself. That being said, he asks why such a talented person is working as a pharmacist in the Prazer neighborhood. Mao Mao says that, even he, having received two talents he was not so lucky either as his single most important part of his body body was taken away and hearing this people deduce that her father is a eunuch so Mao Mao explains that because he studied abroad in the west he ended up being transformed into a eunuch at the hand of the previous emperor and leaving this matter aside she notices a hotel with some people in front of it Papaya understands why Jin Shi came in disguise so he asks a little more about the people who frequent the house. Verdict however Mao Mo leaves of course he can't talk about this subject after all they are talking about a brothel that said Jin Shi remembers what was said previously by Lacken about asking someone he knows how to lower the price of a courtesan so he decides to ask this question to Xi but Mao Mao states that this is a very unpleasant question but she is still willing to answer this question and explains that there are two ways to achieve this so she comments that most courtesans are trained when they are apprentices and at that time they are separated by 
beautiful and simple girls so they are separated by functions from entertaining clients to serving teas and looking for potential clients and as the courtesans gain experience they become more and more guys and Mao Mao says that some of these girls remain untouched by customers until they are purchased and in these cases these girls are the most valuable and if she is a courtesan who has already been touched her value drops by half. And finally if the girl getting pregnant is where it is practically useless and worthless. And then with this terrible atmosphere, we finished episode 17 of the Apothecary Diaries and man, I really want to continue watching this story. I want to see where this mystery will lead because what's going on is this story about this companion who got pregnant and became worthless because the value was lowered in fact, it's Mau Mau herself. I want to see how this connects and if you want to see it, leave a like and subscribe and let's go towards episode 18 and also towards 50,000 subscribers and guys comment below part of 18 very very much comment below part 18 i'm bringing you next saturday i'll see you in the next video i went